returning for 115 yards. And they did it through the air as the sophisticated Commodore passing scheme took advantage of Bama's inexperienced defensive secondary with two touchdown passes. And when the Tide had the ball, the Commodores rose to the challenge, allowing just 88 first half yards as they handed Alabama its first homecoming loss in 26 years, 30 to 21. But 1985 is a different story. This year, the tide is rolling with victories over Georgia and Texas A&M on their way to a 3-0 record and a return to the top 10. Alabama fans are excited, and Vandy fans are wondering if the Commodores can survive a tidal wave in Nashville. We'll find out as Alabama comes to Vanderbilt. Network Television presents Super Football Saturday. Today, the Vanderbilt Commodores host the 10th-ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. And by Michelob Light, super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? From Dudley Field on the campus of Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, 70 degrees, clear skies, a beautiful day for college football. The undefeated Crimson Tide of Alabama winning their SEC opener three weeks ago over Georgia, 20 to 16. Vanderbilt University with their SEC opener today. Vanderbilt one and two coming into this game with losses to Kansas and last week a real close loss to Iowa State. The Crimson Tide has returned to the glory years in the minds of a lot of the fans. However, for SEC of Opponents, it remains to be seen how strong the tide will be. Ray Perkins football team, ladies and gentlemen, is a basically mistake-free football team, strong on offense and on defense. Hi, everybody. It's Bob Neal along with Tim Foley. And Tim, the man who makes it go for them on offense is a quarterback whose name may become as known, as well known as the Stars and the Namaths and the Stablers, Mike Shula. He is a junior from Miami and, of course, the son of Miami Dolphins head coach Don Shula. Mike is the guy who plays the way Perkins wants him to. He's thrown four TD passes, only one interception, and he seems to do just the right thing at the right time. He integrates as well as any quarterback can into this system, and he's got uh, an ability to put Alabama in the right situation at the right time, calls a lot of plays from the line of scrimmage, and of course has a great knowledge of the game, which he inherited from his father. And a lot of great running backs, some, some very good freshmen, and they just keep running at you. You got Hill, Humphrey, and Jelks, three excellent running backs that you'll see, all freshmen, all exciting. They've got a lot of offense, and Albert Bell at wide receiver Richardson, they can throw the ball, they can do what they want to on offense. Kerry Good, their star halfback, is still injured, probably won't play today. So we talk about Vanderbilt's defensive unit, Steve Wade, number 90, is a man you'll see a lot of, and also Chris Gaines, their middle linebacker, and a pretty good Vanderbilt defense. Yeah, they're pretty good, Bob, but they're outmatched man for man. They're going to have to do some things differently, and you, you'll look for some different fronts today from Vanderbilt. They're going to try to confuse Alabama. And one of the things we always enjoy about Vanderbilt games is they have such an exciting, interesting offense with their A-back and their quarterback passing game. Their starting quarterback, the junior Mark Ratcher, was injured. He's out, and two freshmen will probably play. This man will start John Gromos. Gromos, he'll be backed up by Timmy Richardson. Both of them true freshmen. Uh, Gromos going to see his third Gabe, see an action in his third game. Richardson hasn't really played much at all. They're going to try to get the ball to that man, Jim Pop and Everett Crawford. Alabama basically playing a zone defense, bend, not break concept, and they're going to try to throw the ball underneath. And Alabama will have to go to some man-to-man -man coverage underneath to eliminate that. Alabama's defensive team is probably their strength. Cornelius Bennett, their great outside linebacker, is still injured, won't play today, but they're still going to be plenty strong, as you'll see when we get started in a moment. From Dudley Field in Nashville, Tennessee, Vanderbilt in Alabama. And we'll be joining our Football Saturday crew at the studios in Atlanta right after this. Super Football Saturday continues in studio with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. We talked a lot about Mike Shula after his clutch performance in the final seconds against Georgia. You've known him since he was a little boy, and he continues to get even better. Mike Shula's having a sensational year. He was 9 for 12 last week, but he did something that no other Alabama quarterback's been able to do, and that's Joe Namath and, of course, uh, Kenny Stabler. 
He took the Alabama team the first five times they had the ball, and he, they were, all five times they resulted in scores. It's been a great year for the Southeastern Conference. Of the 22 non-league games so far, the SEC has lost just four. But now it's time for them to go head-to-head. -head. Well, you know, in most all conferences, uh, wherever it is, they think they play good football. But really and truly, realistically, any of six teams can win uh, their conference. They're that evenly matched. Auburn's not only number one in the conference, but number one in the nation. They play this afternoon at Tennessee. That's going to be a tough game. Auburn, just uh, Bo Jackson is the name of their game. He just, But they can throw the ball, too. They've got excellent receivers on that team and a good defense as well. Uh, Tennessee, they've got Tony Robinson. And when you have that and you've got the speed he's got, and Tim uh, McGee from Tennessee, that's right. you got something. Okay, remember a few weeks ago, Emory Ballard told us that Mississippi State was going to win the SEC? And everybody laughed, but uh, here they are, 3-0, and and Emory Ballard might know what he's talking about. At home today against the Florida Gators, if they win that game, they could be on their way to the SEC title. Well, Florida's no pushover. South Carolina, outside the SEC, playing against the Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, it doesn't look good for my Gamecocks this week. They're going up to Athens. They're playing between the hedges, and their record uh, against Georgia playing in Athens is 18-3 against them. <laughs> Elsewhere, Kentucky at home against Cincinnati. Tulane is playing Old Miss at home. LSU, Idle preparing for next week's game against Florida. Outside the SEC, a team we have followed a lot this year, Florida State 3-0, taking on Kansas, also 3-0. Danny McManus, their quarterback, and fine quarterback at that, has been knocked out the last two weeks and will not be starting today. Oklahoma, Minnesota. Oklahoma finally beginning the season. That game will be on uh, Turner Network Television. That will be tonight in Minnesota. Also this afternoon, a game will show highlights of continuously throughout the afternoon, Notre Dame, Purdue. Uh, that is always a good matchup between those two teams. It's not fair that Jerry Faust has a schedule like he has. He's on the fifth year of a five-year handshake, not a contract, and his schedule from here on out is murderous. This is the third Big Ten team he's played in a row. He's split the first two. What's going to happen today? Uh, we, that is what we came to see. <laughs> okay. We'll be back. We'll have highlights, of course, of that game throughout the afternoon. Let's go back to Bob Neal and Tim. Both teams have entered the field. We'll be ready for the kickoff in just a moment from Dudley Field in Nashville. This is Turner Network Television. toss here elected to exercise their option in the second half so Alabama will be receiving and will be going from right to left and the deep back for Alabama you see in the upper right hand corner of your pictures number 26 freshman Bobby Humphrey he'll be playing out of the backfield and he's an excellent kick return man too so there's the man who they hope will get the football down there Murray Hill another freshman is on one of the wings number 46 and Chester Braggs, number 30, on the other. Number 49 is Alan Herline. He is a kicker and a punter for Vanderbilt. And as George McIntyre, the Vanderbilt head coach, said, Alan Herline is following along in the tradition of the great Vanderbilt kickers. He is doing a great job punting and kicking the football. So we're ready to get underway. Last year, Vanderbilt spoiled Alabama's homecoming with a win down there. But Alabama has won here every year in Nashville since 1969. The kickoff to number 46, Hill to the 26-yard line. And there, Alabama's Crimson Tide will go on offense. And let's have a look at the Crimson Tide. Mike Shula, four touchdown passes, only one interception, completing nearly 68% of his passes. Turner and Braggs will start in the backfield, but you'll see a lot of players running the ball. Bell and Richardson, both good, both with great speed. David Johnson, Gilmer, Neighbors, Condon, and Rose are the starting offensive line. Wes Neighbors, the center, nicked up a little, but is the leader there. And Thornton Chandler, a real pro prospect at tight end for Alabama. It is first down from the 26-yard line of the Crimson Tide, undefeated on the year. Braggs gets about five to the 31-yard line off right guard. Let's look at the Vanderbilt defensive unit. They are hurting, but they have some pretty good players. Wyndham, Worm, Wade, and Thomas are up front. Steve Wade had a great game against Alabama last year. The linebackers are the strength of the Vanderbilt defense, led by Chris Gaines at the middle slot. 34, his brother Greg plays for the Seattle Seahawks. The corners, it's Sykes and Anderson, and the safeties for Vanderbilt, Noel Wells and Jeff Holt. Second down, six, just outside the 30, Crimson Tide. Second play of this ball game from Nashville. To number 44, Craig Turner, short of the first down. They'll probably spark at about the 34-yard line. There's George McIntyre, his seventh year at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is giving Alabama a little bit different look. They're playing almost a six, split six look, Bob. They're giving a real wide look. The, op the middle looks real open right now, and uh, they've closed it up on short yardage. Double tight ends on the third down and about one and a half for Alabama. Braggs gets the first down. 
first down by about a yard out to about the 37 yard line number 34 Chris Gaines the sophomore from Old Hickory Tennessee making the stop and there is Ray Perkins graduate of Alabama in 67 third year as head coach at Alabama has a record of 16 and 10 and is a much happier guy he says it's more fun winning this year. He certainly was a lot more relaxed a lot calmer. I think he's feeling more confident in what he's accomplished. Great recruiting year. He's got some fine young athletes and they really seem to be playing well together. He's played 12 freshmen so far in this young season. First down 10 Alabama from the 38 yard line. Mike Shula just hands it off again. The Braves hit at the line of scrimmage after a game of maybe one or two. Bounced off the first hit by Mark Whaler and then goes down. Mark Whaler, the outside left linebacker, is a junior from Cincinnati's Moeller High School. Chris Gaines plays in the middle, and Armando Fitz plays on the outside for Vanderbilt, and those linebackers are the strength of that team. It really gives Vanderbilt more flexibility on defense that they've had in, than they've had in a long time because those linebackers can cover man-to-man. -man. They're real quick, very aggressive against the run. Second down eight, Alabama from the 39-yard line. Opening drive of this ball game from Nashville. First pass of the day for young Mike Shula. Wants the screen to the right side. He's successful with it to the 41 or 42 yard line. Craig Turner with the reception. Whaler knocks him out of bounds and they're going to spot it at the 43. About four yards short of the first down. And there's young Mike Shula, the junior from Miami. And Tim, I was just talking about how this young man has grown since you've known him. Really, the uh, first time I saw him, I think he was five years old. He used to run the balls in and out for our scrimmages and practices down in Miami. And uh, I think in the last year he's grown. He seems to be at least 6'4 now, has developed physically, been on a strong weight program there in Alabama. A real specimen. Third down four from the 43. Bell in motion for Alabama. Shula only a four-man rush by Vanderbilt. Shula has a lot of time. Tipped and incomplete. It was intended for Al Bell, tipped by number 34, Chris Gaines. The man with his left arm up. And there's the man, Chris Gaines, who's been playing so very well for Vanderbilt. That's the first time in six drives that Shula hasn't taken him for a touchdown. As you mentioned earlier, all five drives he was involved in last week against Cincinnati were touchdown drives. And uh, that time they tried to hit Bell down across underneath the coverage for the first down. Ball thrown a little high. Chris Moore about to punt for Alabama on the fourth down and four. Low snap. Gets it away with no problems. Young Mike McIntyre is back to take the punt. He's going to just let it bounce. It gets a Vanderbilt bounce. Outside the 25, they're going to spot it at the 26. Not bad field position for Vanderbilt. And there the Commodores, after stopping the Alabama opening drive, will go on offense for the first time today. This is Turner Network Television. Commodore football, first down 10 from their 26. Let's look at that starting lineup for Vanderbilt. The quarterback, John Gromos, he's 6'5", a pure freshman, only 18 years old. Through two interceptions, one touchdown pass in his opening game last week, replacing the injured Mark Ratcher at quarterback for Vanderbilt. He's going to open up throwing the ball. Stands tall in the pocket. And is open. It is number one, Everett Crawford. Up for about eight yards near the 35-yard line. Everett Crawford plays that A-back position and will make a lot of receptions in this ball game. There's young John Gromos. You'll see a lot of this type of action this afternoon. Just a zone pattern. Pop curling up, Everett Croft, Crawford curling up. Cromos leads, reads the open receiver, gets him the football. Alabama will have to play some man-to-man -man underneath, but they're patient. That was enough for a first down for Vanderbilt. First down 10 out at the 36 and a half yard line. Cromos gonna throw it again. It's complete again to number 81. Jim Pop the tight end out here to the 39-yard line. And here's that starting lineup for Vanderbilt. Gromos, the quarterback, you've seen in action already, as you have Everett Crawford. Carl Goobaby Woods, their best running back. Clay Parker, Gerald Mitchell start at the flanker and split in positions. We'll see a couple of other players there, too. The best offensive lineman is number 69, Will Wolford. He'll have his hands full with John Hand, number 78 for Alabama today, and Jim Pop. A lot of people think he is a potential All-American candidate at tight end. Second down, seven, Vanderbilt. Just inside the point. Here's Crawford. It's about a yard on the left side. Number 58, Wayne Davis making the stop. He's inside the linebacker. 
attacking position. And let's look at the Crimson Dive defensive unit. The real strength of this team, Han Jarvis and Derek Slaughter is starting in place of Brent Soule, who's nicked up there on the defensive line. Lydell Mitchell starting on the outside linebacking position for the injured Cornelius Bennett, Randy Rockwell at the outside. Godwin and Davis are the inside backers. Wilkinson and Robinson on the corners. Thomas and Kermit Kendrick starting at free safety in place of Rory Turner today. Third down, six Vanderbilt. From the 41, Ramos, man's up, first down. To the 47-yard line goes Jim Puck, Joe Godwin making the tackle. And the Commodore fans are excited after that 11-yard gain and two Vanderbilt first downs. But, Jim, we talked a lot about this. This is a bend but don't break Alabama defensive team. And this is the type of philosophy that Ray Perkins will employ, as will Joe Kimes, the defensive coordinator. They're going to let Pop make that catch. The problem there was, as Pop makes the catch, there should be somebody coming and putting their helmet in its back to shake them up a little bit. Too much room given to that underneath pattern that time. Ramos, three out of three, as we have action on the line of scrimmage between Kurt Jarvis and Shane Adair at center. Penalty marker down there. We're in the opening quarter of play from Dudley Field on the campus of Vanderbilt University in Nashville. Offsides is the call against Alabama. 10.02 to go in the first quarter. If I haven't told you previously, it is a perfect day for college football. 70 degrees, clear blue skies in the lovely city, Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. It'll be first down five as they move the ball to the 43 of Alabama. That's Crawford setting at the wing on the right, the A-back position. Young freshman John Gromos gives to Carl Woods. Has some blocking. Gets about four yards. Tackled by number 90, Joe Godwin, the inside linebacker, the junior from New Brockton, Alabama. And there's Carl Goobaby Woods, a junior from Gallatin, Tennessee. He led Vanderbilt in rushing for the last two years and uh, probably will break all of Vanderbilt's rushing records. You'll see Vanderbilt in a lot more two-back offense than you have in the last couple of years, simply because of Everett's, Everett Crawford's running ability. Both those fellows can run the ball. Second down to Vanderbilt from the 40-yard line of Alabama. Gromos, Alabama with a three-man rush. Gromos in trouble and is going to go down at the 46-yard line of Vanderbilt. Number 55, Derek Thomas, a freshman. Also playing on that side over there where Cornelius Bennett is out of the game. Gromos goes to the turf, losing 13 yards. This time we have a little bit man-to-man -man underneath. You see number 58 running with Jim Pop. They locked up man-to-man, -man, backed it up with a zone, and inexperienced strikes there. That's, that's a ball that Gromos should have just gotten rid of and uh, lined up for third and short again. Instead, third and 15. From the 47 of Vanderbilt split backs passing situation for Vanderbilt but of course that's more the routine than the exception three man rush again whistle sounds the 25 second clock is down to zero I don't know if it ran out before they snapped the ball or not but with John Gromos as a freshman coach George McIntyre said he was very pleased with the play of that youngster against Iowa State last week uh, but that he was a freshman and he makes those kinds of mistakes here's the mark off against Vanderbilt That's our referee, Al Ford. Delay of game, the 25-second clock had wound down to zero. Vanderbilt's got to go all the way to the 38-yard line of Alabama for a first down. The line of scrimmage, the 42 of the Commodores. Shovel pass to Carl Woods, and he goes down. Tried to make a cut and simply fell down before Wayne Davis could tackle him. And then will come Allen Herline to punt the ball away for the Commodores as their drive stalls after a couple of first downs. And the statistics, that looks like about 30 yards of total offense. But the important thing defensively, one thing that you always have to keep in mind, that no points are given for uh, yardage amassed. And Cincinnati got 266 yards in the first half last week, only got 10 points. Here's Alan Herline. He averaged 44.6 yards per punt last week against Iowa State. Look at this one. They're going to down the ball. They're going to spot it at the four-yard line. That's seven times this year that this youngster has punted the ball inside the six-yard line of the opponent. That was a 54-yard punt by Alan. 
Ellen Herline following in the footsteps of All-American graduated senior Ricky Anderson. After that excellent 54-yard punt by Allen Herline, Alabama starts from their own three-and-a-half-yard line, first and ten. 44 Turner and 26 Humphrey in the backfield for young Mike Shula. Scoreless game, seven minutes to go, first quarter. Hand off to Turner, drives to the five and no more. Initial tackle by 34 Chris Gaines. Already that youngster has made three tackles in the game. Good play by Wade closing it. Here comes Chris Gaines filling that play before the guard has a chance to cut him off. Good pop. Now this is an area of the field, Bob, as you know, that uh, a lot of coaches like to go deep with it. It's almost like a punt if it's picked off and it, you have a chance to make a real, real big play down here. And Alabama has the speed at the wideout position. Here's Shula there. Just going to hand off to Turner again. Turner gets out to the 11 or 12-yard line. Tackle by 36 Mark Whaler. He made his third tackle of this game, too. Those, as you'll see, for the most part, the Vanderbilt linebackers will be making the tackles in this game. So it'll be third down and about two for Alabama from their 12. Alabama playing without Kerry Good, their great tailback who's still hurt. He is on the sideline. He is dressed, but probably won't play today. There's Craig Turner, the Crimson Tide's leading rusher. Double tight ends. Turner gets the ball and the first down. Drives it to the 15-yard line where Whaler makes the stop again. 6.05 to go, quarter number one, scoreless ball game from Nashville. Alabama and Vanderbilt, the season opener for the for the Alabama, for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Alabama beat Georgia in their season opener. You know, Ray Perkins had a decision to make this spring about his quarterback, but most times coaches really don't make decisions. Players make decisions who's going to play. Their, their performance determines their ability to play, and Mike Shula just had a great spring, and he's been a great leader so far this year. There's a draw play to number 26, Bobby Humphrey, who has great speed. Gets about seven out here to the 23. I said season opener. I mean conference opener here in the SEC. Our first SEC versus SEC team telecast of the year, too. This year. Bobby Humphrey, one of those free three freshman running backs that'll play for Alabama. And the unusual thing about Bobby is that he can catch the ball real well. Most running backs coming into college need some time to develop that ability to catch the football, but... We caught a TD pass last week. Second down three from the 23. Here's Humphrey with that good speed. First down to the 28-yard line. Alabama started this drive at their own three. You see that wide open middle as you look at the replay here. Wade taking the inside charge, cutting off any dive, and then he's Fitz is coming on the pursuit. A good block there by uh, number 77 on Alabama. Who is that rascal? Bill Condon. Good job, Bill. First down 10, Crimson Tide from the 28. Hand off to Turner to the 32-yard line. John Wyndham, number 89, with a stop for Vanderbilt. <laughs> I'm chuckling again about Ray Perkins when we talked to him yesterday, Tim, uh, when we said, how would you describe your offense of ball control? He says, with a chuckle, ah, I guess I'd call it boring. But he seemed to have a little pride in his voice when he said boring. All, all that means is consistent, and that's what offensive coaches love. They don't like these uh, have to be the razzle-dazzle type of teams because that means you don't have the ability of the opponent. Second down, seven, Alabama from the 31. Scoreless game, 4.18 to go, quarter number one. Shula to put it in the air. Plenty of time. Can't find anybody. And he gets out near the 40-yard line for the first down. Mike Shula, Mark Whaler making the tackle. There's something that Shula does so well, and that's to know when to throw and when not to. Good coverage here by the Vanderbilt defense. They're trying to flood the weak side of this pattern. Nothing there. Mike intelligently pulls it down, seeks to find the open area. Now, you can see here he's, he's not real fleet-footed, but he's good enough to get it upfield and uh, does an adequate job running the football. What he does best is he, he just exudes leadership and confidence, and the rest of that all Alabama offense has picked up on that. First and 10 Alabama from the 39-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Tied in Chandler in motion. Look, there was that screen to Humphrey. Good coverage by Vanderbilt. Very little gain, maybe a yard out near the 40. Kermit Sox number four and 34 Chris Gaines were over there. We're going back to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. 
Notre Dame is determined to stop the passing of Purdue quarterback Jim Everett. In the process, they leave him wide open up the middle. He goes down to the one-yard line where his first and goal. Purdue scored on the next opportunity, 7 to nothing. Boilermakers. So, Tim, you'll be happy about your alma mater's success early against Notre Dame today. Second down, 10. Alabama from the 39. Chandler in motion. And off to Humphrey. The 44, and down he goes, hit by Jeff Holt out of the strong safety position, a senior from Gallatin, Tennessee. And Bobby Humphrey, 6'1", 180, from Birmingham, Alabama, had over 100 yards last week, and Ray Perkins likes him and a lot of his freshmen. He's played 12 freshmen so far in a three-game young season. He really likes this college coaching atmosphere, too. He's, he, he feels like the player's a lot more receptive, eager to listen and learn, and he likes to see a, a young play, player develop. Gets a lot of satisfaction on that. On the third and four, the conversion situation. That's Humphrey in motion. Shula to throw, only a four-man rush. Richardson's wide open. To the 28-yard line. Greg Richardson, number 17, stopped by Sykes and Fitz for Vanderbilt. You're going to see a slot formation to the wide side of the field. Slot man clears it out. Richardson coming underneath. Catches it in between Gaines and Whaler. Wells misses a tackle. Fitz pulls him down from the back. And 17 Richardson limped off the field as you look at it again. Looks like he injured his ankle. We don't know how serious. We'll keep a check on that for you. Noel Wells, a true freshman playing weak safety for Vanderbilt. Played admirably. First and 10 from the 28 of Vanderbilt. Alabama ball. They started this drive on their three. Humphrey, not much that time. A yard or two. Armando Fitz, the right side linebacker with a stop. He's 6'4", 220 from Madison, Tennessee. You'll see Humphrey back there, Murray Hill, number 45, Gene Jokes. There are three freshmen who will play out of that position today, along with Chester Bragg. Harry Good, their starting tailback, will not play today in all probability, trying to let him heal up from that knee injury. You better get back in there quick. I'm sure he feels like uh, you know his stomach's going to have ulcers from watching all these good freshmen run the football. Second down eight from the 26 of Vanderbilt. Here's Humphrey on the sweep to the left side. Gets a good block. And is run out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Penalty marker on the play. John Wyndham chased him out of bounds. Down to a minute left in the first quarter. This clock ticking fast as... Both teams have either completed passes or continued to run the ball. Clipping against Alabama. Critical penalty. And that's only the 14th penalty of the year for Alabama. Primarily a mistake-free football team. Uh, Ray Perkins felt like in five out of their six losses last year, they beat themselves, really, with penalties and mental errors and turnovers. And so they really emphasized not just minimizing those things, but trying to eliminate them. Clipping. Against the offense, they're going to be second down. You saw number 17 Richardson returning his sock to his foot. He seems to be okay on the Alabama sideline. He was uh, shaken up a little bit after he caught that 27-yard uh, pass. Now it will be second down 18 Alabama back at the 36-yard line. Shovel pass to Turner. Breaking tackles gets inside the 25 finally tripped up by Chris Gaines the initial contact was made back there at the 30 but Turner bowled his way up there he's a six foot tall 200 pound fullback from Gaithersburg Maryland he's really an impressive athlete he sat out a year uh, due to some economic problems but got himself squared away and now he's back playing good football for Alabama averaging almost five yards a carry third down long five for Alabama at the 23-yard line of Vanderbilt. Scoreless game, only 25 seconds to go in this quarter. Here comes a blitz on Shula, runs out of there, and goes down short of the first down. They're going to spot the ball at about the 23, the line of scrimmage. Alabama has a very good field goal kicker by the name of Van Tiffen. A lot of folks' choice is all SEC prior to the season, and Tiffin is six out of seven kicking field goals coming into this game. There he is, number three, Van Tiffin, 5'10", a junior from Red Bay, Alabama. That's 
the last play of the first quarter. And it's scoreless here in Nashville. Vanderbilt nothing, Alabama nothing. For our stations along the line, we've missed commercial positions five and six. And our next commercial will be number seven. We'll make up the missed spot in the next quarter. In case you're keeping score, this is Turner Network Television. The drive to stall, and now Van Tiffen attempting a 40-yarder against the wind. He's six out of seven on the year. And that one is good. And Alabama takes an early three-to-nothing lead in the opening play of the second quarter. And we'll be right back after this. This is commercial number eight. yard field goal by Van Tiffen. Alabama takes a three to nothing lead over Vanderbilt. You see Kenny Weatherspoon number 33 on the left side of your screen. And down on the right side of your screen is 96 Clay Parker. Van Tiffen set to kick off. Rusty. Oh, excuse me Tim I might mention they started that drive on their own three yard line. Rusty Stokes has done an excellent job of the Alabama special team. They stopped Texas A&M on kickoff returns returns three times inside the 15 yard line. That's just real team speed and hustle. In that first quarter by the way Alabama 105 yards of total offense Vanderbilt 14 Vandy rushed for minus 11. There's the scoring drive for you and it took seven minutes and 20 seconds. Interestingly uh, that was exactly how much time was left on the clock in the first quarter when Alabama started that drive. And to kick the field goal as a result of the drive is the opening play in the second quarter. First down 10 from the 20. Second possession for Vanderbilt. Only had the ball one time in the first quarter. Drummer gets out of trouble. And the youngster gets up close to a first down. Good heady job, and that's one of the comments that George McIntyre made about his young quarterback. He says Grumos is poised and very smart, and he says he's a, these are the words of George McIntyre, an excellent athlete. Really didn't get an opportunity to play a lot in high school, threw a lot his senior year, but was playing a hot, behind a youngster who went to Notre Dame, a young man named Pesavento, and uh, so only was a starter his senior year. Rest Hill, Illinois is his hometown. Second down one, Carl Woods gets the first down after the 33-yard line. Wayne Davis, number 58, with a stop for Alabama. Also into the play, 57, Randy the Rock Rockwell from Daphne, Alabama. Ray Perkins says of Randy Rockwell, if I had 22 guys like Rockwell, I'd line up and play anybody in the world. And Randy's not that big. Six feet tall, maybe 200 pounds if you dunk him in the water, but he gets the job done. He's going to be on Jim Pop a lot today. First down 10, Vanderbilt from their own 33, trailing 3-0. Early moments of the second quarter. Here's the old Statue of Liberty to Carl Woods. Rides to the 40-yard line. A gain of about seven on the play. Kermit Kendrick and Todd Roper making a stock for Alabama. If you're Vanderbilt, you have to counter punch on offense. You don't have to have the ability and strength up front in your front wall just to move the ball down the field and on a team like Alabama with that front three of Jarvis hands and Derek Slaughter playing in there. Second down three. From the Vanderbilt 40. And off Woods gets some lucky. And the first down to the 45 yard line. Goes Carl Woods. Todd Roper with the stop. Carl Woods now with 19 yards and four carries on the afternoon. And he's the, the workhorse out of the running back position in the backfield. The other running back for Vanderbilt is called the A-back and primarily will catch the ball. Ray Perkins, Mike DeBose in the front of your picture there. He coaches the defensive line for Alabama. 13.25 to go first half. Alabama three, Vanderbilt nothing. First down Commodores. Romos holding that ball up high. Overthrowing his receiver, looking for 84 Al Rogers. Would have been a first down down near the 40-yard line. Al Rogers, a sophomore from Nashville. You notice how John Gromos comes back. He comes up with that ball held high, as you mentioned, and uh, and you can always tell a, a young quarterback because he'll do exactly what it says to do in the book. They said drop back, hold the ball up around your ear, and that's exactly where he has it. As he begins to relax, he'll become a little bit more normal, a little bit more fluid 
with his motion. But the idea is they wanted to get the ball up by his ear so he can release it in a hurry. John was certainly not expecting to be playing against Alabama as an 18-year-old freshman. Here he is on second down 10 from the 45. Screen pass. Everett Crawford close to the first down. Inside Alabama territory to the 46-yard line. Derek Thomas with the stop over there. Gain of nine on the play. Great block by Shane Adair on that screen. Picked off Wayne Davis, who seems to be all over the field for Alabama, at least in their first three games, 46 tackles. Adair hustled out there, picked him off, and allowed the, the game. Number 12, Carl Parker comes into the football game at the A-back position. Parker switched over from wide receiver to A-back, but once again, they're somewhat interchangeable. It is second, make it third down one. Double tight ends in there, too. Parker in motion. Carl Wood. Gets the first down inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Vanderbilt penetrating Alabama territory. This is a 3 to nothing Alabama ball game with 12.23 to go, second quarter of play. Look at Will Wall for number 69. Get his face right in the numbers on hand. Hand unloads him. Logie cuts him off and back slides in there for the first down. John Hand has been a force for Alabama throughout his career there, and uh, they expect him to be a number one draft choice. Both teams have five first downs in this ball game. Ramos on the throw on first down, right over the middle. It's complete to Everett Crawford to the 37-yard line of Alabama. Roper with the stop. Crawford with his third catch of the day. He'll catch nine or ten balls a game, as will tight end Jim Pop. The bet by the Alabama defense is that Vanderbilt cannot move the ball 80 yards on them without making a mental mistake, without getting a penalty, without causing something negative to happen for their offense. So they're play playing a nice, patient defense. On second down and about four. Here's Everett Crawford. Quick acceleration gets the first down. Roper and Davis with a stop for Alabama. Six first downs for Vanderbilt now. He spotted at the 33-yard line. Everett Crawford, Darrell Holt out there leaving it. Look at Mark Herman as number 62. Crawford looks for his first opportunity upfield to get that first down. And don't confuse patience on defense with passiveness. The idea is you're supposed to be reckless, reckless and aggressive, but conservative in the calls. First down 10 from the 33-yard line of Alabama. Ramos to throw. Plenty of time. It's complete to Crawford again to the 25, just outside the 25. Penalty marker down to the Vanderbilt backfield. See, now here it comes. He got a holding penalty against Vanderbilt. It's going to walk him back 10 yards and be first and 20. And, of course, last time Vanderbilt had a drive underway against Alabama, there was a sack of the quarterback for a loss of 13 that caused basically the same problem. And, again, you could even call that a mistake if you want offensively, allowing a sack, and that stopped the previous drive. There's George McIntyre. And holding on the offense, still got first down. So it moves that ball all the way back to the 42-yard line, and Vanderbilt has to go to the 22 for the first down. George is quite a guy. He was a quarterback himself at the University of Miami back in 58, 59, and 60. Gerald Mitchell, Clay Parker, the wideouts for Vanderbilt on first and 20 from the Alabama 42. Pressure on Gromos. Shovel pass forward. That's an incomplete pass, by the way, which is one of the reasons that teams are more and more going to a shovel pass because it's a good way to get the ball to the back and pitch it to him, but if he drops it, it is simply an incomplete pass. Of course, good. as we saw, it can be intercepted. <laughs> That's a good point, Bob. As Bob mentioned, watch this now. The ball comes underneath, and so that that is simply an incomplete pass when the ball is, is uh, not completed, and the idea is if the man is covered, just go ahead and throw it at his feet. Still second down 20. Gromos. All 6-5 of him. Incomplete intended for Pop. Excellent coverage down there by Alabama. 57, Randy Rockwell. Commodore fans want an interference call, but there was none. Just excellent coverage. Well, that's the matchup that we talked about. In passing situations, they'll slide Rockwell over and put him on Pop. He's trying to get, his, get himself open underneath. And that ball could have been intercepted if Wayne Davis had got his hands up a little earlier. Came right over the top of his head. 
third down 20. Vanderbilt two out of three on third down conversions today. This is a tough one though. Third and 20. Ramos running out. Gets good protection. And that ball was tipped. Incomplete and Vanderbilt stalls because of the penalty. I think it was big John Hand 78 who got it. And when I say big, John Hand is 6'7", 275 pounds. Watch number 78. This is a design rollout. He fights off Will Walford working to the outside and bats that ball out of the air. There's a number one draft choice. John Hand, a senior from Sylacauga, Alabama. John Hand wants to go into law enforcement work, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> If he stopped me, I'd give him my license. No questions asked. <laughs> you know, Herschel Walker of Georgia, and now the USFL. Here's a penalty coming up here. Said he wanted to go into law enforcement work. That illegal use of the hands against the defense before the pass was thrown. It's automatic first down. Well, there's a big break for the Vanderbilt Commodores. And, Tim, as you talk about Alabama's defense, bending but not breaking and, and looking for mistakes on the offense of course the reverse can be true and that is that sometimes the defense can make the mistake exactly. You see here. exactly and right now Alabama has three folks in there that are getting their first start on defense two of them true freshmen first and ten from the 37 <laughs> Ramos it's complete to pop to the 31 yard line game of about five or six line of scrimmage or the uh, marker for the first downs at the 27 yard line it was Roper and Rockwell stopping Jim Pop who's 6'6 245 pounds and we talk about pro prospects there are several in this game today and Jim Pop is one it's got to be one of them he's really improved his skill and blocking wasn't a real good blocker when he came here he got a lot better at that strong much better upper body strength and uh, all around tight, great tight end, really. Second down four from the 31. Ramos to Carl Woods. Woods with a tough yard or two inside the 30. Might mention that Vanderbilt has an excellent kicker themselves in case they have an opportunity for a field goal attempt down here in Allen Herline who punts and kicks. This will be third and two. Some fans might ask why they don't go to more man-to-man -man underneath on Pop and on Everett Crawford, and, and maybe they don't like the matchup someplace else. Maybe they don't like a one-on-one -on -one with a wide receiver like Clay Parker or Boo Mitchell on the outside, so it could be any one of a number of things. But basically, I think they're trying to get a, a philosophy across to their young people. Third down to Vanderbilt. Gromo's going to throw on third and two. Has a man. It's complete to Crawford. First down at the 23. Ricky Thomas with a stop for Alabama. Crimson Tide leading in the game, three to nothing. 9:30 to go, first half, and Vanderbilt continues to drive. Got an isolation here on Everett Crawford coming down, reading the defense, sees it's his own, curls away from Ricky Thomas. Gromos delivers the ball on time, first down. George McIntyre said that uh, if Alabama continues to play the style of defense they played in the first three games, that uh, Crawford and Pop may have 10 catches apiece. First down, 10 from the 23. Ramos again. Open again. To the nine-yard line goes number six, Gerald Mitchell. a freshman from Valdosta, Georgia. And he's quite a story here. Now he looks outside. See, he's got the linebackers breaking up on the short stuff. Now he goes to the outside. Vernon Wilkinson expecting linebacker help. Leaves a little too much cushion. And Boo Mitchell pulls it in in front of him. Alabama leads 3-0. 8.45 to go first half. Vanderbilt ball first and goal from the nine. Carl Woods. The bounds at the six. And when you hear the sounds that sound like boo, they're saying goo. His nickname is Goo Baby, G-O-O, -O, and why, I don't know. There's no real background on that. Well, there are several stories about that. <laughs> we were at the Grand Ole Opry last night. They've got these goo-goo things that you eat there. With, maybe he likes those, huh? We'll go with that one. Okay. S second down goal from just outside the five, Vanderbilt, trailing three to nothing. Driving on Alabama. This drive started at the Vanderbilt 20. It was set back because of a holding penalty. And a penalty against Alabama. The Commodores continued on. Ramos. Into the end zone. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of number one, Everett Crawford. Turk 
13 passes have been thrown by Gromos. He wants Crawford across the middle. Crawford dragging it across the middle. It, it has time to develop. Goes up. If he'd have caught it on the first try, it would have been a score. But he can't pull it down. Doesn't gain possession really till he's out of the end zone. No catch. Once again, our TBS sports crew giving you a delightful view of that from the end zone camera. Good work, guys. It'll be third down goal from the six. Gromos, here comes the blitz. They pick it up well. Incomplete. There's a penalty marker on the play. Intended for Gerald Mitchell. It was 38 Vernon Wilkinson covering. The man in the white hat, referee Al Ford, holding, defensive holding against Alabama. Southeastern Conference crew here at Al Ford is heading up. Nate Anderson, Bert Ackerman, Tommy Larino, Nick Bonney, Jim Diopolis, Ted Thomas, and Ray Moon. Half the distance to the three-yard line. Here's the announcement. And holding by the defense prior to the pass being thrown. First down, automatic. I think we got a good view of this. Watch it. Pop working across the middle, trying to push off from Ricky Thomas. I'm not sure if that's what they called or if it was Wilkinson down in the bottom of the screen working against Boo Mitchell. It's always tough down there for a defensive back, especially when you give a quarterback that much time. They didn't get much pressure on that blitz. 17th play of this drive. First and goal, Vanderbilt at the three of Alabama. Play fake. Man's open in the end zone. Incomplete. Just past the outstretched fingertip of Carl Parker, number 12. This is a tough place to pass down here. Vanderbilt is not a running team, as you well know. They're a passing team. Even though they're excellent at short passing game, they don't have much field to work with, Tim. They don't. What teams usually like to do down here, Bob, is either roll out to buy time for the quarterback, to give the receiver time to separate himself from the defender, or cross patterns, where the uh, receiver has a chance to run his defender into another defender, and whereby become open. Second down goal from the three, Vanderbilt. Trailing Alabama, 3-0. There's that roll. Incomplete again. Excellent coverage by Alabama. Intended for number one, Everett Crawford. It'll be third down and goal from the three. Here come two new receivers into the game. Number six, Gerald Mitchell. Number 96, Clay Parker. They'll also have the play from George McIntyre. And a critical call here. See Bob Stanley in the lavender sweater there, standing next to George McIntyre. They're talking to John Crop upstairs, who's the offensive coordinator. They know what they want. They've called this play uh, during their meetings in, during the week. They've got to set up things they like in the goal line. And, and they don't get it. Stopped at the line of scrimmage is 27, Carl Woods. Alabama's defense holds. They bend, but they don't break. You've heard it a lot. And Alan Herline and the field goal unit comes in for the Vanderbilt Commodores. You got Roberts back in the end there on defense. Just jam things up the middle. Somebody slid through. It was Tommy Cole, number 51, made a nice play coming underneath the blocking. This is going to be a 19-yard field goal attempt. Very difficult angle for Herline, by the way. He nails it. We have a tie ball game. Vanderbilt three, Alabama three, with seven minutes, 31 seconds to go in the second quarter. This is Turner Network Television. Vanderbilt with 23 plays on that drive, but they don't get in the end zone, and Ray Perkins calls it the bend but don't break defense. Here's what he has to say about it. My philosophy defensively is uh, stretch, 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 bend, 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 but don't ever break, you know. Really work hard to, to try to keep from breaking when you get down there inside the 20 or 15-yard line. You can tighten it up somewhat because you don't have as much field to work with. And people with a, with a short passing game, uh, mixing it with the run like Vanderbilt does a super job of it, they're going to make yards and they're going to make first downs, but just don't break. 
Well, that's exactly what happened there. They did break three points worth, though, and we do have a tie ball game. Alabama three, Vanderbilt three, with 7.31 to go in the first half of the ball game. And thus far, Tim, a good close contest, closer than most people thought it would be. Closer than I thought it would be. I didn't think that Vanderbilt would be able to move the ball on Alabama like that, even though they have that bend, not break philosophy. I think that that defense is bending a little bit more than Joe Kynes would like. Here's the squib kickoff. Coming down over here to the wingman over on the right side. That's Murray Hill. And down he goes at the 32 yard line. 23 yard return. There's the drive. 78 yards, 21 plays, 7 minutes, 24 seconds. And excuse me, Doug Allen is the uh, kick returner, not Murray Hill. Murray Hill's number 45, another freshman. Doug Allen gets it out to the 32 yard line where Alabama sets up offense again. They're going to tag on a spearing penalty under this one, I think, Bob. A little over aggressiveness on the part of an Alabama coverage player. Or Vanderbilt coverage Excuse player. Excuse me. Thank you. What a big Ball break. Foul, personal foul against the defense. Got first down. Boy, you talk about uh, uh, George McIntyre said that the kicking game, field position, return, and coverage was, a, in his opinion, the number one priority in this game for Vanderbilt. And here's a, a problem for them. 47 of Alabama, near 53 yards away from the end zone. See the rolling. Left hander. Going up duck. Incomplete at the 15. He was looking for number 17, Greg Richardson, who had gone out earlier with a sore ankle. Still looks a little bit tender as he runs off the field. Vaughn Anderson, 28, covering for Vanderbilt. He never did look like he really broke into full stride, Bob. I think that ankle's bothering him, and obviously it would affect the timing on the throw from Shula. What they're trying to do there was Noel Wells is sticking his nose up there from the free safety position, very involved in the running game, tried to put it in over his head. Second down 10 from the Alabama 47-yard line. Tied 3-3. Seven minutes to go. First half. Bobby Humphrey. A lot of traffic. Looked like the Nashville Freeway rush hour. 48-yard line, and Vanderbilt knocks Bobby Humphrey out of bounds. So a third down and long yardage situation for the Crimson Tide here at midfield. Notice Alabama running a lot to their right. You know, Larry Rose is over there on the right side, a freshman, true freshman, starting his fourth game, just done an exceptional job, and he's working against really the third team defensive end for Vanderbilt. Lost the first two during the preseason. Third down six from the 49 of Vanderbilt. Sure, plenty of time. As the man. Excellent catch at the 20-yard line to Clay Whitehurst, a sophomore, 29-yard reception. Clay Whitehurst is a product of Nashville. Went to Brentwood High School and played against a lot of these Brentwood Academy players who are on the Vanderbilt team. Couldn't have placed it in there any better than Mike Shula did on that one. It was a man-to-man -man underneath coverage here. Clay Whitehurst immediately read that, started to get width on that defensive back, Thon Anderson. He's got to get a little bit more help on the on the deep end of that. Out of the eye this time. And off the turn of the Tripped up and makes it to the 14-yard line. It was Whaler, number 36, getting a hand on the ankle of fullback Craig Turner. So it's a 3-3 tie with six minutes to go in the first half. But Alabama's driving. They were aided by a good kickoff return. Then a spearing penalty that brought it all the way out here to the 47-yard line and that exceptional catch by Clay Whitehurst just a moment ago. Second down four from the 14 of the Commodores. Bobby Humphrey. Close to the first down. Tackled by 22, Armando Fitz. Good job by Eric Snyder and Steve Wade also closing it up on the inside. He's about a foot short of the first down. Double tight ends go in there now for Alabama. Their power formation. Third down, about a foot. At the 11 yard line of Vanderbilt. And off the Humphrey dive in. He was stuck at the line. He'll, it looks to me as though they've marked it as a first down. Mark Whaler with the great hit up there. But it looks to me as though they've marked it far enough for it to be a first down. 
don't know how they did that. <laughs> we got to take a look at this. Every once in a while, my old defense comes out. <laughs> this is the kind of aggressiveness you like to see. Look at Whaler going right up at the top. It didn't look like Humphrey even got to the line of scrimmage before he was headed the other way. But they gave him a first down. At the 10, first and goal, Alabama. It's tied 3-3, 4.45 to go first half. Greg Turner driving to the five. Now this is where the Alabama running game can really hurt you. They've got excellent backs, very big, good offensive linemen. They like to run. They're comfortable running. And this is a place where they can just keep ramming it right down your gut here to the six-yard line. They're running in there behind number 54, Wes Neighbors, who's playing a little, little injured today. Little Nick has a hip flexor pull, but uh, they talked for a while about not even bringing him on the trip, but it seems to be playing real well. Second down goal from the six. Here they come, Bobby Humphrey. Touchdown, Alabama. That's Humphrey's second touchdown of the year. Now you're going to see that exposed middle of Vanderbilt. They've got their tackles lined up real wide. Watch Steve, Steve Wade come knifing in there to the right side. A good block by Thornton Chandler. Paves the way for a touchdown for Bobby Humphrey. Well, Humphrey paid for that touchdown. He was hit hard earlier, and you saw there he was stuck very hard right as he crossed the goal line. That tip for the point after. And it's good. With three minutes, 59 seconds to go in the first half from Nashville, Tennessee. Alabama, 10. Vanderbilt, 3. Last year, 43 Southeastern Conference football players qualified for the academic All-SEC squad, the most to make the honor roll since 1977. In order to qualify, an athlete must be at least a sophomore, a regular performer, and maintain a 3.0 or B average in the classroom. Our congratulations to these scholar-athletes from the Southeastern Conference, 43 who qualified last year. So the Commodores, who put together a 21-play drive for a field goal last time, have an opportunity to do it again. And plenty of time left in the first half, 3.59. Alabama leading 10-3. Boy, Van Tiffen can really hit that ball. He's probably the best SEC kicker I've seen in terms of strength since the departure of Kevin Butler of Georgia. Some other folks feel similarly about that. Got a very strong leg. Well, we wish you could be with us here at Dudley Field in Nashville today. What a great day for college football. Leaves are starting to turn in this part of Middle Tennessee. Temperature around 70 degrees at kickoff. And we've got ourselves a good ball game. First down 10, Vanderbilt from their own 20. We're almost complete to pop. Fumble. Let's see what they call this one. Alabama ball. Yep. They said that Pop had it in his possession. Ricky Thomas is the man with the ball, number 34. And that's the kind of turnover that Vanderbilt can ill afford because this is an opportunistic Alabama team. Watch Joe Godwin. You see just his feet coming into the picture. Pop makes the catch, turns up field, puts the ball away, and Joe Godwin pops it out. Ricky Thomas there to scoop it up. And remember that Vanderbilt defensive unit had just been on the field for an eight-play, 68-yard drive. And now they're right back out there again with their backs to the wall. First down, 10 Alabama from the 26 of Vanderbilt. Jula to Bobby Humphrey. That's a good block. Humphrey with power to the 20-yard line. Noel Wells drives him out of bounds. Bobby Humphrey is 6'1", 180, so he looks very slim. But Ray Perkins told us yesterday that this young man is a strong runner. And uh, Ray Perkins just couldn't say enough good things about Humphrey. Just watch him. Hermit Sykes coming up to make the stop. Noel Wells drives him to the outside, and here comes Sykes. And what you got to do, you look a little bit for a move. You can't really put the hammer on him, but Humphrey drives his head and shoulders up through Sykes. It is second down three. First down, Alabama to the 14-yard line. They can just run backs at you. Braggs, Humphrey, Hill, Jilks, Turner, Doug Allen. They remind you a little bit 
of the old Alabama squads 10 years or so ago and Bear Bryant there were backs who had gained 70 yards in a particular game who hadn't played yet that year and they've got an offensive line that is really developing great recruiting class this year for Ray Perkins first and 10 from the 14 of Vanderbilt following the fumble by Jim Pop and off Craig Turner right up the middle a gain of about six to the eight yard line 3-10 to go, first half. Ray Perkins started his coaching career at Mississippi State, was over there with Tom Goode in 1973, then went to the Patriots and to the Chargers, where he was the offensive coordinator. Then George Young hired him, general manager of the New York Giants, hired him and brought back the Giants program, and here he is at Alabama in his third year heading from Second down three from the seven. Alabama leads 10-3. 241 to go, first half. Frank Turner. Not much this time. Shorter first down. Initial tackle by 34, Chris Gaines, with his sixth hit of the afternoon. I got a kick out of you talking to Ray Perkins at our coaches' meeting. He said, Tim, you look like you could still play, and you said, I could play if I had to cover you. <laughs> <laughs> we always look forward to playing each other because he knew he could beat me, and I knew I could cover him. So <laughs> it was a good confidence builder for both of us. <laughs> it is third down and two from the six-yard line. A big defensive play for Vanderbilt here. To help their confidence a great deal if they could stop Alabama, but brother, that's tough. Here yes. goes Shula. Naked reverse. Touchdown! That brings a smile to the face of Ray Perkins. And a way to go, Mike. Now, he might have done that on his own. Look, he looks a little bit surprised by the whole thing. I don't know. They let him make decisions at the line like that. That's true. And that, Daddy Don's on his way to Denver. He's leading the Miami Dolphins against the Broncos, but Miss Dorothy's at home. Mike's mom watching this thing. Minute 53 to go, first half. Ben Tiffin in for the point after. And it's good. And it's Alabama 17, Vanderbilt 3. After the fumble by Jim Pop, then the drive for the touchdown carried in by quarterback Mike Shula. This is Turner Network Television. Vanderbilt lost last week to Iowa State in a very close ball game after outplaying Iowa State defensively, but the mistakes caused by the Vanderbilt offense cost them that game, and here they've cost them a tie. It's Alabama 17 to 3 following the fumble by Jim Pop. And then Alabama simply drove it right into the end zone with Shula on a quarterback keeper for the score. There may be a return here. Kenny Witherspoon, number 33. Out to the 23-yard line. We're going to take a commercial timeout. This is commercial number six, and we'll be right back to Dudley Field in Nashville. Delta to Europe. To London. It's the only place to holiday. And Delta gets you there. Quite far. Frankfurt and Germany is the only place to have a good time. But Delta gets you there. Come to Paris. Need I say more? And Delta gets you there, too. London, Frankfurt, or Paris. The choice is yours. can't have it all. Who says it can't work overtime and take the time to enjoy it all? Who says you can't have super premium taste and a less filling beer? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Dudley Field in Nashville. Alabama leading Vanderbilt 17 to 3. 147 to go, first half. Alabama 184 yards total offense. Vanderbilt 102 thus far. John Gromos, the freshman to throw. Carl Woods wide open. Can't hold on to the ball. Wayne Davis with the tackle. This is the kind of thing that happens to a team that's losing as you look at the scoring drive. Even players, and we know how good Carl Woods is. We've seen him perform very well in several telecasts over the last two or three years, but even a player like that starts second-guessing. Second 
Well, what happens is you catch a few balls up in front of those defenders, and they come up and give you that strong rap, that little helmet rattler, and you tend to remember that. So the next time the ball is coming your way, uh, sometimes your mind is other places. Second down, 10 Vanderbilt. Hey, hey, Almost again. Hey, hey. Trouble throws a screen. Gain of about six to Carl Parker, number 12. Derek Thomas chased him out of bounds. That was the 18th pass thrown in this ball game by Gromos. He's completed 12. On the other hand, Alabama's thrown only seven, and that's about uh, about what you'll see. A little bit more than two times as many passes by Vanderbilt. I'd, I'd say at least two times as many. The most that uh, they've let Shula throw this year is 13. He's right on target with seven in the first half and probably won't throw any more this half. Third down five from the 28-yard line. Ramos has man open again. It's Parker, first down. Boy, he really got hit by number 27, Kermit Kendricks, freshman from Meridian, Mississippi. Vanderbilt in their hurry-up offense here. Clock stops while the sticks are moved on the far sideline. Vintage Joe Kynes on Kermit Kendricks. He hasn't even found the suit store yet. <laughs> you see, he knows where the locker room is and the, uh, the meal room. Batted down once again by Alabama. And I'll tell you what, when you bat down a pass that's thrown overhanded by 6'5", John Gromos, you're getting up there. And there's the guy. If anybody can do it, 6'7", John Hand. He'll be a probably a consensus All-American if he plays injury-free this year. He's been playing very well. So is Kurt Jarvis, by the way, the nose guard, number 95. And don't forget Larry Roberts. Uh, Mike Bo says Roberts playing every bit as good as Hand is. He's a senior, hasn't done much up until now, but really has made a decision. He's come on strong as a player. Second down, 10 from the 33. Gromos. Carl Woods. Hit in the backfield, but broke the tackle of John Hand. Nice run by Carl Woods for about six or seven yards to the 38 yard line. John Hand came back there and almost separated Carl Woods from his feet. Watch this. He works to the outside around Mark Herman. Herman doing a nice job driving him wide. Uh, hand thought he, I think he could wrap him up with one hand, but old Goo Baby kept his feet rolling and got it back to the line of scrimmage. Block down to 108 to go in the first half. Third down six, Vanderbilt. Trailing Alabama 17 to 3. Three man rush by Alabama. Gromos. Plenty of time. It's complete for the first down inside Alabama territory. And out of bounds goes number one, Everett Crawford. And Crawford with his fifth catch of the day. That one for 20 yards, and he now has 53 yards in receptions. Now you're seeing man-to-man -man coverage underneath here. Alabama linebackers having a hard time running with Vanderbilt receivers all across the board on that particular pattern. There in Vanderbilt, John Gromos calls timeout to come over to the sideline to talk to George McIntyre. So Vanderbilt started this uh, drive from their 23-yard line, have it inside Alabama territory. For those of you down the line, this is commercial number five. This is Turner Network Television. So Gromos has concluded his conversation with the Vanderbilt Offensive Brain Trust. Let's see what they call here. On a first and 10 from the 43 of Alabama. to the 27 yard line and Vanderbilt continues that hurry up offense. Herline's got the leg for a field goal if they can't get it into the end zone. He kicked a 51 yarder against Kansas a couple of weeks ago. 52 seconds remaining in the first half and they reset the sticks on the far sideline giving Vanderbilt an opportunity to set up. And here comes Gromos again from the 28. It's complete to the 17 yard line and out of bounds goes number six Gerald Mitchell. 44 seconds to go in the half. Vanderbilt started at their 23-yard line with less than two minutes to go in the half. Well, George McIntyre has done an excellent job tutoring that young man, John Gromus. I thought Boo Mitchell tried to get out of town, I mean, excuse me, out of bounds a little bit earlier there. Had to back up into it. But Gromus looks good. Poised, relaxed, confident. Looks like he knows what he's looking for. 49 is her line. He's two out of four on field goals this year. But I said he did kick a... 51-yarder earlier against Kansas. From the 16-yard line, first down 10. Vanderbilt, of course, hoping to get it into the end zone. Kitchen sink time, Bob. And so
some poise being shown by John Gromos there under a great deal of pressure. He stood tall in the pocket. Number 95, Kurt Jarvis had shot right up the middle. Also, number 58, Wayne Davis was back in there, and he threw the ball away to live to fight again. <laughs> A new addition to the Vanderbilt staff this spring was Whit Taylor. And Whit Taylor was a quarterback of that 1982 Vanderbilt team that went eight and three and went to the Hall of Fame Bowl and earned George McIntyre Coach of the Year honors. Second down 10 from the 16 of Alabama. <laughs> Incomplete. Number 12, Carl Parker was open. But Gromos just couldn't get him the ball that time. Gromos has thrown the ball 25 times in this first half, completed 15 for 131 yards. I wouldn't be surprised if they came back with that same type of pattern. Van, uh, Alabama is playing a zone defense and running with pop man-to-man -man underneath. And I, I think that the cornerbacks at, in this area of the field are giving too much of a cushion, and they can complete the ball in front of them. There's a good view of John Gromos and how tall he is. He's 6'5", and that's one of the reasons that George McIntyre selected Gromos to start at quarterback in place of another very talented freshman quarterback here at Vanderbilt, Tim Richardson from Sparta, Tennessee. He said, I, I like the fact that he's a pure passer, he's a tall passer, and he can certainly get rid of the ball more easily because of his size. Uh, McIntyre did say that there's a chance Tim Richardson could play in the ballgame some, but I've been relatively impressed with Gromos. It looks like he has some major college quarterback ability. I don't think there's any question. If he likes to throw the ball, he came he came to the right place because uh, they're going to air it out at Vanderbilt. They've got a good core of wide receivers. Last year, they graduated four wide receivers that had tryouts with NFL franchises and They've got more of a pro-style offense here than any other team in the SEC anyway. So I think as far as developing in a quarterback, being around a guy like John, uh, excuse me, George McIntyre and understanding how he thinks and how he dissects the defense is going to help a, a young man in a professional career. Third down 10 Vanderbilt from the 16 of Alabama. 33 seconds to go in the half. Crimson Tide leads 17 to 3. Here comes a blitz. Romos gets it off, and down goes his intended receiver, Clay Parker. He just fell down. George McIntyre has been scratching his head. He says, I've never seen anything like it in all my years of coaching. My players are falling down and tripping on the artificial surface here at Iowa State, at Kansas. They even changed shoes. They bought an entire new group of shoes for these players. And you see Parker just trips over his own feet here, number 96. Goes in motion causes the Alabama defenders to switch men. Got a step here on Ricky Thomas, but as you mentioned, tried to run faster than he can go. Would have been a tough catch anyway into the sun, I think, Bob. 33-yard field goal attempt by her line. You got him roughing the kicker. It's no good, but he was hit by the penetration. Good call, Tim Foley. I believe 21 Freddie Robinson came shooting in there. 21 seconds remaining in the half now, and it'll give Vanderbilt new life. So her line gets a purple heart comes over to the sideline <laughs> and they won't even count that against it. Robinson making a good effort but what you're looking for on defense is running, roughing the kicker against the defense going to be an automatic first down. Yeah that's roughing the kicker not running into and that's a big difference in the call. Here they'll spot it off half the distance. Give Vanderbilt an excellent opportunity with 21 seconds remaining in the half, and Vanderbilt has one timeout left. They spot it just outside the eight-yard line. See, that's a mental error more than anything else. You, know, you want to be aggressive. You want to go after the ball, but try not to make a dumb mistake. Good hustle by Robinson, but it's not the right time. It's coming. Incomplete. Once again, Gromos overthrew his receiver. He was looking for number 12, Carl Parker. Parker's been momentarily open. I'm not saying he's uh, wide open, but he's got an opportunity to catch the ball, and Gromos has had problems recently trying to get it to him. He's a little bit high, you know, and I think that comes from short, short stepping the ball. You know, if you don't really get a full stride into it, sometimes it's going to float on you. I think they ought to just work on the outside, throw the wide receivers out there. See Parker going out to the top. They'll probably bring him back in motion again. 
try to get some confusion. Second down goal from the nine. 17 seconds to go in the half. Romos. Incomplete intended for Pop. Double coverage on a nice play. Penalty marker is down at about the 12-yard line. It's going to be holding against Vanderbilt. You know, you lose a, a junior quarterback and the veteran quarterback, Mark Ratcher, to dislocated hip uh, in that Kansas game. You lose a, a player of that caliber to a, a thin team in terms of talent like Vanderbilt, and it really causes you all kinds of problems. Even though Gromos looks like he has some potential, he is certainly not the veteran poised quarterback that Mark Ratcher was. Let's watch this coverage of Jim Pop. He's always got somebody hanging on him. They're covering him everywhere he goes this year. He's all SEC last year. They know he's, know he's a favorite receiver down here. They're double teaming him. Derek Thomas, Brenton Cooper still had a chance to stick the ball in there, though. Uh, Pop could have caught it. May have been tipped. It was deflected into his face mask, but did not. Second down 19 now as the ball gets moved back on the holding call against Vanderbilt. 12 seconds to go in the half. Only a three-man rush this time. Complete nice defensive play by the Rock. Randy Rockwell. Intended for Jim Pop. It's fourth down, and her line will come in again. Once again, to quote Ray Perkins, if he had 22 like Randy Rockwell, he'd never be nervous. And that's something for a coach to say. As nervous natured as they are, anyhow. I get the point, but I don't believe Ray Perkins <laughs> would never be nervous. <laughs> Uh, the kicker came back out of there. You see, uh, her line is on the sidelines. So it's, of course, third down. This is the 14th play. I had the fourth down going into the ball game there due to the penalty. Of course, it's third down. So eight seconds remaining. I also thought they might not even attempt this play. Penalty marker at the 10 with seven seconds, six seconds. And the clock continues to run. And ran down to three seconds. The clock at three. Rockwell trying to cover Carl Woods. I think the flag was thrown against Randy Rockwell. George McIntyre has his headsets off. He's down on the 20-yard line talking to the officials about the fact that the clock ticked off three seconds after the ball was clearly, the pass was clearly incomplete. However, I'm not sure it started on time. I think it did not. When I looked up after the flag had been thrown, the clock had only ticked down to seven, and there was eight seconds remaining before the time. So it may, in fact, be accurate, but it was ticked off retrospectively. I like that. That's good. Glad retrospectively. I, I said that. I don't know if it's correct, <laughs> but I liked it. <laughs> they put the ball to the 10. Three seconds remaining now in the first half. Alabama 17, Vanderbilt 3. This, let's see what they decide on the sideline. Talking to George McIntyre as Ray Perkins looks on, and they come over to talk to him also. Vanderbilt, I'm sure, has run 12 plays inside the 10-yard line. They, they ran a bunch the last time they were down there, had a penalty, and, and ran another group of plays. I think they're probably explaining to the coaches about the clock, and I, I think our assessment is, is probably right. In fact, that it was started, the scoreboard clock was started late. And they let it tick down to the accurate amount of time left on. Here's the Defensive official. pass interference against the defense. It's an automatic first down. The clock will have six seconds on the clock. We're going to hold it for three seconds. <laughs> I think Vanderbilt got a break there. That had to take longer than two seconds. But nevertheless, it'll go to six seconds. They'll hold it for three, then start that three seconds down to the bottom left-hand corner. And the six seconds is a big deal because it could give Vanderbilt enough time to attempt to pass here and then still have an opportunity for a field goal if they make it happen fast. It's a first down and goal from the 10. Gromos, no doubt, will go into the end zone. Does. Incomplete. Clock to one second. So her line will come in here for a 17-yard field goal attempt. Pass was intended for six. Gerald Mitchell. Britton Cooper, number 20, was covering on the play. It's a severe angle. They'll put the ball down at about the 17. It'll be a 27-yard, just inside a 27-yard attempt by Herline. He was successful on a 19-yarder early.
That one's good. So Vanderbilt does come down with less than two minutes on the clock. Drive 73 yards or so. And now it is Alabama 17, Vanderbilt 6. And that's the end of the first half of play. And it's a closer ball game than most folks expected. Minus the Alabama turnover, it would be real close right now. Stay with us. Could be a good second half coming up right after this. At halftime, it's Alabama 17-6. We're at Dudley Field in Nashville, Tennessee on the campus of Vanderbilt University. Beautiful day for football. Temperature now up to about 74 degrees. Clear blue skies. And it's been a good football game, save for the big turnover at the 20, their own 26 by Vanderbilt. It would be much closer than the 17-6 score, and Vanderbilt scored just as it went out. So, Tim Foley, let's take a look at some of the highlights here at the first half of play. Van Tiffen got Alabama off to the start with a field goal, but her line comes right back for Vanderbilt to tie it at 3-3 midway through the second quarter neither team scored in the first quarter then Alabama came roaring back and here's Don's one of Don's favorite kids Mike throwing to Clay Whitehurst for a big 26 yard gainer and that set up the Alabama touchdown by young freshman running back Bobby Humphrey number 26 and Tim I like the look of this young man he really has shown a lot of power and uh, agility I think he's going to be a great back for Alabama Vanderbilt had an opportunity to come right back because they were moving the ball Jim Pop the all SEC candidate gets Pop fumbles the ball at his own 26 and Alabama takes it in five plays later here's some real poise on the part of young Mike Shula he really acts this one out just sat there looked at the back for a minute and now he heads toward the corner plays full back going into the end zone but there was a minute 47 seconds left Alabama uh, Vanderbilt's offense really got to popping drove all the way down for this 26 yard field goal to make it 17 6 just as the halftime ended and that's the score at halftime and Tim uh, what's your, your view of this most people thought Alabama was going to come in here and just really blow Vanderbilt frankly a struggling football team right out of the saddle but it's been a pretty close game it really has now Alabama only had the ball for five minutes in the second quarter scored 17 points I think the surprise is that Vanderbilt's been able to move the ball on Alabama but I think that Alabama is sticking with its same defensive philosophy just stay patient uh, and Vanderbilt's had probably 12 plays inside the 20 yard line but couldn't get it in and we've seen the young quarterback for Vanderbilt John Gromos throw 29 passes trailing in the game he may throw another 29 or more there could be 60 of them it'll be exciting we know that for sure we'll be right back with the second half kickoff in just a moment this is Turner Network Television As you take a look at the stats, minus the turnover, the fumble by Pop on his own 26-yard line, this game's about as even as the score would have been should it have been 10-6. It is 17-6, Alabama leading. But as you can see, Bama out rushing, but Vandy out passing. Total yards are pretty even, just 20 additional yards for Alabama. One turnover, the big stat there against Vanderbilt, and the time of possession is, is quite equal in this ballgame. We have a 17-6 contest. It'll be interesting to see what happens here in the second half. Vanderbilt uh, won the coin toss at the beginning of the game and elected to exercise their option for receiving in the second half and they've done that so Van Tiffen will kick off he's only had one kickoff return thus far even though he's kicking into the wind Clay Parker 96 and 33 Weatherspoon are back there that's Weatherspoon at his 10 to the 22 23 yard line tripped over his own man and it's been an interesting statistic. These teams have both had successful drives. Only four possessions each. There's only been a punt by each team. So you see how that field position has been, though. Alabama had that one start at the 47-yard line. That was a big one. And the other one at the 26 at Vanderbilt, resulting in the two touchdowns. They had to drive 53 yards and then 26 yards. John Gromos, his 30th pass of the afternoon, and the third time John Hand has knocked one down. Hand is a good name for number 78 today. He batted that ball about 30 yards. It's in the back of the end zone. May have injured his right hand a little bit. Watch John Hand on the right side of your screen reject this one. Wow. See you later. Hang on to it, John. <laughs> Could have been a great catch. I wouldn't mind seeing him play a little power forward. 6'7", 275. He could protect the baseline, couldn't he? I think so. Second down 10 from the 22. 
He's batting that down on this quarterback for Vanderbilt, 6 5. Misdirection play for Carl Woods. And there's big John Hand again. No game. Oh, what a player John Hand is. That is no fumble. It was after the whistle. John Hand is just uh, having himself a ball here this afternoon. Uh, I talked to a couple of pro scouts about John Hand, by the way, and said, what does he need to work on to be great in the pros? Both of them said nothing. He just kind of threw Jim Pop, Pop in the dirt. Grabbed a hold of Goo Baby. And the big thing that, that John needs to work on is uh, just a little bit of quickness. Probably needs to get a little bit stronger. On the third down and ten, Gromos has a man open. It is Pop who can't hold on to the ball. Frankly, not a good day for Jim Pop. He's an All-American candidate. And Jim Pop has had one fumble and has dropped a couple of balls, one that could have been a touchdown. It would have been a tough catch, but couldn't hold on to it. And that young man is struggling here this afternoon. Remember, he's getting pretty good coverage, but he's having a hard time holding on to the ball. This is the first time Vanderbilt's had to punt from this deep in their own territory. They gained no yards on those three plays. You know, excuse me, the, band, the uh, Alabama linebackers were playing with Gromus' head a little bit that time, jumping in there, faking a the blitz, trying to give him something to think about. Line drive. This could be dangerous. Gets a good artificial turf bounce, though. Here comes number one, Albert Bell. Flags go down, as does Bell, at the 34-yard line. Tackle made by 25, Arnold Elliott, freshman from Mount Healthy, Ohio. Love it. Love the name of that town. 50-yard punt, six-yard return. There's the clipping call against Alabama. And we'll be back right after this. Alabama 17, Vanderbilt 6. They penalize Alabama 10 yards for clipping. Spot the ball back at the 19-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide's first opportunity offensively in the second half. Pitch to Bobby Humphrey. He's dragged down by 34, Chris Gaines, his seventh tackle of the afternoon. Gaines was Vandy's leading tackler coming into this game and uh, just done an exceptional job all year long. Really came on in the spring. And of course, he comes from a, the line of Blue Bloods. His brother, as you mentioned, plays for the Seahawks. And it's going to be a fine linebacker here at Vanderbilt for a couple years. It'll be second down seven from the 23-yard line. And off to Humphrey. Nice delay play. You have to like the look of Humphrey. Oh, he runs the ball well. He was really punished on that tackle by Steve Wade. Got him coming up from behind. But the misdirection worked very well against this Vanderbilt depleted defensive line. Kind of a lead draw. Greg Turner leads the way. Wes Neighbors cuts off Gaines. And look at this. Leaping through, pulls a leg through, makes Wells miss, runs right through Holt's tackle, and finally they drag him down. Good acceleration and power. Doesn't run like a freshman. To the 39-yard line of Alabama, Gene Jelks, another freshman at number 22 at the halfback position for Alabama. Bell goes in motion. Here comes Craig Turner. He churns out to the 46-yard line. Alabama just continuing to churn out yardage. And that's what Ray Perkins likes to see, as he called it, the good old boring winning football. For a guy that likes to run the ball as much as he does as a coach, you'd be surprised to know that he still holds two bowl records for the most yards receiving in a game in the Sugar Bowl and in the Orange Bowl. Second down three from the 46-yard line. Here's Craig Turner. First down, Alabama. Some other SEC action today. Auburn will be playing at Tennessee later this afternoon. Florida's playing at Mississippi State. Mississippi State's looking good. They're 3-0 so far. Florida was tied by Rutgers. South Carolina's playing at Georgia today. Cincinnati's at Kentucky. LSU's playing open date. And Ole Miss will be playing at Tulane tonight. It's first down 10. Bobby Humphrey back in there, number 26, along with Craig Turner, 44, in the running back positions for Alabama, leading 17-6. Opening minutes of the third quarter from Nashville, Tennessee. Wade's offside. Bell with a diving catch. Al Bell. And 
there's a penalty marker at the point of his reception also at the 22 yard line. Looked like Steve Wade the defensive tackle number 90 for Vanderbilt had made contact there. That was a 28 yard pass completion. So Mike Shula grew up listening to Bob Greasy who is the master of voice inflection when it comes to calling signals. Bell makes the grab. They get a face masking call down there. He's at a Coffeyville Junior College. Signed originally with Purdue University. But, uh, had to spend a couple years at Coffeyville, work on his grades, and now he's here at Alabama. Certainly adds some excitement to this offense, both he and Richardson on the outside. So they'll tag this face mask penalty. I believe it'll be a five-yard unintentional face mask call. Goes to the 17-yard line. Outside against the defense that was refused. We had a five-yard face mask penalty against the defense is accepted. Be first down 10. So Alabama, zip, zip, has driven it right downfield. This is the sixth play of that drive. They started at the Alabama 19-yard line. Greg Turner. He's powerful. Gets inside the 15. Chris Gaines with a stop for Vanderbilt. You know, coaches don't like to second guess themselves as you see them working on Mark Whaler's equipment but I'll tell you one decision that Ray Perkins would like to change back in 1983 Ray Perkins put Mike Shula into a game uh, early in the season I think it was the second game against Mississippi they were ahead 33 to nothing he played 10 plays and that cost that was the last time Shula played that year and that cost him a year of eligibility they had tried applied for an exception didn't get it. And uh, I guarantee he'd like to have this guy for a couple more years. Second down seven from the 14. Mike Shula. There's Bell. Touchdown, Alabama. Sykes tried to bat it away at the last moment. Missed it. 14-yard touchdown pass. Right in front of the Alabama cheering section. And there's a large contingent here. It just wasn't a lot of daylight to stick this one in there. Bandy's blitzing, kind of a delayed blitz. Shula unloads it. Kermit Sykes in good shape, but just enough room to sneak it in. And Bell, good concentration on the ball, takes it into the end zone. Bell, the junior college transfer from California. He's a fine athlete. Came in here ready to play. Point after by Van Tippen is good. With 10.52 to go, third quarter, Alabama 24, Vanderbilt 6. This is Turner Network Television. So Mike Shula throws the 14 yard touchdown pass. He ran for a touchdown in the first half and then passed for this touchdown. So he's having himself quite a day. Seven out of nine for 116 yards. A lot of great quarterbacks coming out of Alabama. Remember Bart Starr. There he is back in the early 50s before he went on, went on to Green Bay to, for all those glory years there. Of course everybody remembers number 12 Joe Namath who led the New York Jets to that 16-7 Baltimore victory. 62 to 64. Clay Parker out to the 27-yard line. There was one other very good Alabama quarterback by the name of Kenny Stabler, shown here at the age of seven, I think. <laughs> that was 50 years ago. Where's the old gray beard? Of course, he had his great years with the Oakland Raiders. And I predict that Mike Shula will be a professional quarterback. Most people, I think, previously didn't think that. But, Tim, you and I were talking about it. Made a lot of progress here in this last year. Another great Alabama quarterback, Steve Sloan. Now coaching at Duke. First down 10 from the 27. Hand off Carl Woods. Good opening. Out here near a first down to the 37 yard line. That's the longest run from the line of scrimmage today for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt had rushed for only 36 yards in the first half. It's short of a first down by just maybe the nose of the ball. Unless we hurt Richard Todd's mother's feelings, we should mention him too, I think. You go on and on, as a matter of fact. There have been a lot of them. I think you'd have to say those are the top three. First down on the second down short yardage. Carl Woods picking it up for Vanderbilt. So the Commodores come out here running the ball a little bit more than they had in the first half. I told you they threw 29 first half passes. There's that Alabama scoring drive, 81 yards, seven plays. It was aided by a couple of large penalties. The excellent catch by Albert Bell. 
to set up the touchdown and then of course he caught the TD pass Gromos complete to pop who gets about five yards out to the 44 yard line Derek Thomas with the stop for Alabama so Jim pop with his sixth catch of the afternoon Tell you, this SEC race Tim is going to be an interesting one Alabama Auburn LSU and Florida of course ineligible to win the championship but most people think Florida will be excellent again this year and then you've got to start talking about a couple of teams that have kind of come into the picture one of whom is Mississippi State and they're playing Florida today Ramos on second down it's Parker Parker gets the first down with a little bit more to the 46 yard line That Florida Mississippi State game I should say is tonight being played at Starkville and of course Georgia I mean it's going to be 5-6 Tennessee playing Auburn this afternoon 5-6 team race easy what's new right no kidding you know just that and that's what's so great about broadcasting in the SEC you always get some good football it doesn't matter what what level you are in terms of the standings you see in good solid football and uh, teams that can be competitive Vanderbilt driving here first and 10 at the 46 yard line of Alabama they're running the ball a little more. Carl Woods gets about three yards over the right guard position behind Dave Logie. Anthony Smith, a freshman nose guard from Elizabeth City, North Carolina, making the stop for Alabama. You know what they're doing, Bob? They're bringing that A back in motion, and they're using him to double on the defensive nose man. So they're getting a little bit of movement on the line of scrimmage and open, opening up an area for Woods to take it in there. It's another sellout crowd at Dudley Field. They keep packing them in here. This is Saturday afternoon entertainment here in Nashville. Second down seven. Gromos. Plenty of time. Oh, he rifled that one in close to a first down. That was a nice reception and a tough one by Carl Woods, who had, who had dropped, frankly, a difficult catch earlier, but he made a nice one there in double coverage, close to the first down. Vanderbilt's going to have offensive statistics in this game, even though they have not been able to score a touchdown yet. And I'm sure that the, I the idea here is that you just want to get these linebackers used to getting into their drops and then reacting on the football. There's a few times, though, that they've missed tackles as they've come up to make the catch, and that's something that you want to avoid, obviously. They're measuring as they bring the sticks in. You can see it's just a little bit short. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the SEC and the Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated is prohibited. 7.51 remaining, third quarter. Alabama 24, Vanderbilt 6, third down inches for Vanderbilt. Carl Woods fumble, Alabama recovers the 39 yard line second fumble lost by Vanderbilt today it was Greg Gilbert who came up with the ball a freshman from Decatur Alabama number 56 never does stick it in there goo baby never did have a hold of that one and uh... and we'll be right back Well, Alabama recovers the fumble. They have the ball first down 10 at the 38-yard line. Last four possessions, Alabama has come away with three touchdowns and one field goal. Here's Bobby Humphrey. Plenty of running room. First down out to midfield. Let's look at some scores around college football this afternoon as the tide is on a roll here in Nashville. There's a Pac-10, Big Ten matchup. Navy leading Virginia 17-10. Indiana beat Navy last week. Virginia beat Tech. Miami of Florida beating Boston College. And Georgia Tech out in front of Clemson at halftime up at Death Valley. Georgia leading South Carolina. Good sounding ball game there being played in Athens. Producer Skip Ellison with a minor cheer for his alma mater. pass and reception that's the big tight end for Alabama we haven't talked about him much because they've only thrown to him three times coming into this game Thornton Chandler 22 yard pass reception and Chandler is shaken up a bit on the reception look at the pass by Shula rifles it beautiful throw here B beautiful touch on the ball asked Perkins about his tight end whether he could catch the ball he said well we've only thrown it at, at him three times he's caught three we may try it again they did Laid in there nicely in the seam of the zone. Nice catch. Thornton Chandler. 
He got hard on his shoulder. They helped him off the field. We'll check on his physical condition. First down 10. Here comes Greg Turner. Ripping through the Vanderbilt defense to the 19-yard line. Noel Wells with the tackle. And Alabama starting to take its toll on this Vanderbilt defensive unit. Mark Whaler running off the field, holding his right arm down, number 36. Placement going in for him. Fine trap block on that play by Bill Condon, the right guard, pulling and knocking out the John Wyndham, I guess he's blocking on that side. Second down one Alabama. They started this drive up near midfield after recovering a Vanderbilt fumble. Bobby Humphrey. Look at those moves. To the 10 yard line. We asked Ray Perkins about bump Bobby Humphrey ran nine yards there. He said I like him because he loves the game. He has great lateral movement and good feed speed and acceleration. And he took the defensive end way inside on that. Then Humphrey just beat Holt. Wells is coming to try to help out, but uh, and just a good one-on-one -on -one runner. Seems to have the ability to freeze a defender and then make a move. And Perkins added he can also return kicks and has good hands. Right. I wonder if he can cook. <laughs> it's first down 10 from the Vanderbilt 10-yard line. Here's Gene Jokes, another freshman. Not much this time. He stopped right there at the line of scrimmage, making the play number 98, Marvin Thomas from Huntsville, Alabama. And over there's Thornton Chandler, number 81, right in the middle of your picture. Uh, he looks to be okay. He fell down hard on his left shoulder after making that fine reception, but I'm sure he'll be coming back into the football game. He looks all right. Nice play by Marvin Thomas on that last encounter. Beat a double team and... A week ago, he was a linebacker. Now he's playing defensive end. He's it's only 220, so he's fighting for his life down there. Second down goal, Alabama from the 10 of Vanderbilt. Shula on the option, which he runs so well. Jokes, speed, touchdown. His second touchdown of the year. Oh, they've got some good freshman running backs at Alabama. You're going to see Greg Turner get a beautiful block here. The fullback going to chop down a bandy defender. Pow, there he goes on the ground. Looked like Jeff Holt. And then it's just Jelts. His speed takes him into the end zone as Mike McIntyre makes a grasp to try to get him by the shoulder pads. With four minutes, 58 seconds to go. Third quarter from Nashville, Tennessee, Alabama, 31. Vanderbilt, six. This is Turner, Network Television. So Alabama now leads 31 to six. Following that fumble, Alabama drove it right down the field for the score, 61 yards in six plays. Jokes took it in, 10 yards out. And by the way, Alabama now has kicked 136 consecutive points after touchdown that just beat the NCAA record for consecutive PATs down to play Parker Parker to the 27 yard line he's hit by number 40 Bo Wright who's special teams captain for Alabama today and the Commodores will come back out I was about half expecting to see a new quarterback out there for for Vanderbilt another freshman Tim Richardson but John Gromos goes back in not because Gromos has played so poorly but George McIntyre said he would like to see his other freshman too in case you're not following Vanderbilt that closely you may know that a couple of weeks ago in Kansas the number one quarterback junior Mark Ratcher dislocated his hip Gromos and Richardson have been thrown into the thick of it here at quarterback for an injury riddled Vanderbilt University football team. Ramos just can't seem to get it down Tim he's overthrown I'd say eight or nine times out of the uh, 35 passes he's thrown today you're right Bob uh, just been consistently just a little bit high and Everett Crawford wide open and across the other side of the field it's, it's easy to see from up here a little bit different from down there although 6-5 does help I think Gromus has done an exceptional job considering the situation he's been put into and the lack of time he's had to develop. Second down 10 from the 27. Gromus. It's picked off by Alabama at the 32 yard line. And we're going to check in on that big Notre Dame Purdue game uh, in West Lafayette, Indiana. And let's go to Pete Van Weeren and Ron Kramer now to see how they're doing in West Lafayette. Number 84. 
Pete Van Weeren, Ron Kramer with you from Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It is 21 3. Purdue leading Notre Dame. They have just scored on a touchdown pass from Jim Everett and Steve Griffin. Notre Dame awaiting the kickoff. It's a very short kick, and it's a fair catch at the 28 yard line. Here's that touchdown play again, Ron. Well, the crossing patterns. Number 84, Marty Scott coming off to the left, and uh, Steve Griffin going to the right. A perfect strike by Jim Everett for a touchdown. Steve Griffin, just a great catch. Purdue goes ahead 21 to 3. And the Irish now have the ball at their own 28 yard line. They got to make it happen now. 9.27 to go in the third quarter. Everett's just been too tough on them. Steve Forline, who was replaced for one series of plays by Terry Andersack in the first half. Furline back in there now. And what a hit after the reception by Chris Dishman, number 19. He knocked Tim Brown from here to there. <laughs> Timmy Brown making a great catch out there on the right sideline. Oh, it was a pretty good throw by Steve Burline, picking up seven or eight yards. They don't, don't count Notre Dame out. It's a good football team. Second down and two. Pinkett. I don't think he got the first down. It's going to be close. He got to about the 35. Don Baldwin, number 98, making the stop for Purdue. For well, that Purdue defense all day long, making a lot of penetration. Look at the penetration right there. You see that Don Baldwin's all the way in the backfield before Pinkett could get started. And that's why Pinkett's having such a miserable day today trying to run the ball against that uh, Purdue defense. As they spot the ball, it was a loss of about a half yard. So it's third and a long two now for the Irish. Stams and Pinkett are the running backs, and Stams move. The fullback, Frank Stams, jumped the gun. And the motion penalty will move it back again for the Irish. They've been hurt by some big penalties today, Ron. There well, they have sure many have. penalties, but when they have, they've come at tough spots for the Irish. It's been awfully bad uh, for the Fighting Irish, and it, that was a big one because it was third down and three, and it's going to be now third down. And they put a different situation all together in front of them. Now it looks like they're going to have to pass the ball with a third down and eight, and they haven't been doing that very well. This has been a play that the Irish have, as Ron just said, not been able to execute so far in this game. Third and long. Eight yards to go for the first down from their own 30. Merline dropping straight back. Fires the pass. Complete to Brown. They've got it this time. All the way out to the 44-yard line before Chris Dishman brought down Tim Brown. Well, that was a good move by Timmy Brown. He was in motion coming to the inside. Started to the inside on a slant in and turned around and slanted out. It was a good throw by Steve Berline, and he was open. Could have broke it for a big gainer, but a good play defensively by uh, Chris Dishman out there on the sideline. Tim Brown shaking up a little bit on that play. He limped off the field. And on first down, Berline in some heavy traffic there. Runs away from it. Still looking downfield. Now gets rid of it. Incomplete. The intended receiver, Reggie Ward, number 83, out of Long Beach, California. Steve Berline paid for it, too, I'll tell you. <laughs> Tony Visco put him to the ground after the throw. Once you start running around there, the quarterback is fair game, they call him. Purdue with a 21-3 lead. The Boilermakers going for their second win of the season. Conference play begins in the Big Ten next week. Notre Dame is also going for their second win of the season. But right now they trail by 18 at second down and 10. Berline with a straight drop. The pass is complete to Pinkett for a gain of about four yards. A lot of pressure by that Purdue defense. They came a-blitzing. Rod Woodson making the stop for knocking him out of bounds. Some other scores. Ooh, you want to be Michigan. happy with that one, Rod? Michigan halftime, 10 to nothing over Maryland. I am very happy with it. Western Michigan, Michigan State in the second period, no score. Spartans getting a little trouble there by Western Michigan. Navy leading Virginia, 17 to 10. Virginia rated number 17. We saw them last week. Navy. Well, we know one thing. Navy can score some points. Yes, they can. They got a great player, too. And McKellen. Third down, six yards to go for the first down. Burline back to throw, looking, can't find an open man. Down he goes. 
Number 75, Eric Anderson got him. And the Boilermakers have been doing this run all day long. Well, what's happening in the in the defense now, the, the Purdue Boilermakers back there making some great coverage. What's the coverage down here? Berline can't find anybody open out there. The linebackers are dropping in good position. The defensive halfbacks and safeties are, are really covering well, and there's nobody to throw to. Good rush by the Purdue defense. Here's the kick. By Sorensen. Griffin back at the 12-yard line has it. Gets across the 15, gets to the 20, and he's swarmed under right at the 20-yard line. <laughs> And with six minutes and 14 seconds remaining in quarter number three, Purdue has the ball back. Trying to build a 21-3 lead. Well, Purdue really came out to play today. They have really dominated this football game from its inception. 21 -3. And here in Nashville, Tennessee, it's Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 6. Van Tiffen just kicked a 21-yard field goal after a 27-yard drive following the fumbled interception by Alabama and Alabama is about to kick off to Vanderbilt once again 34 to 6 Alabama leading the Commodores with 138 to go in the third quarter from Nashville this is Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you and there's the field goal kicker for Alabama Van Tiffen and he six is Clay Parker from his seventh. Parker had an opening and simply fell down. Maybe they need to order some new shoes. <laughs> the third order of shoes. And Vanderbilt will set up their offense first down 10 from the 27. And how about a, how about a few bars of Hale Purdue? You ready for that? Now we see the new quarterback going into the game, freshman Tim Richardson. This is not his first action this year, although he's played very little. Tim Richardson has thrown the ball a couple of times. He is 3-5 for 13 with two interceptions on the year. Sparta, Tennessee, 6'1", 185. A little bit more mobile than big John Gromos. Rick Crawford. Good run out to the 47-yard line. Freddie Robinson with the stop for Alabama, and Everett Crawford just ripped off a run of 20. That gives him 73 yards rushing the ball for the afternoon. He's just a sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama. Probably a little bit pumped up to play against the Alabama Crimson Tide. Timmy Richardson's quite an athlete. He's a shoots par in golf. He was a point guard on his high school basketball team and uh, a power hitter in baseball. He does it all. Great arm and uh, I think a good sense for the game. The advantage that Gromus has, obviously, is he's 6'5". Here's Richardson's first pass. It is complete to number 84, Al Rogers, at the 38-yard line of Alabama. So Richardson has been able to move the team down the field here thanks to a good run by Crawford and that 15-yard pass completion. And that is the 37th pass of the day for Vanderbilt. We're going to get to see this again. Moving the ball has not been a problem for Vanderbilt. Getting it into the end zone has been the problem. Whoop. Not much room. He squeaks that one in there. Good concentration on the football. 52 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 6. Commodores driving. Been down inside the 20 many times today, but could not get it into the Alabama end zone. Screen pass to Crawford. Excellent in the open field. Oh, an impressive run by Everett Crawford down to the 20 yard line. 18 yards on that pass play. Clock down to 35 seconds in the third quarter. And Richardson's two out of two for 33 yards. Good act here, too, on the screen. Just really a fine job and a good job of open field running by Everett Crawford. Of course, Crawford is replacing Keith Edwards, uh, who led the Southeast Conference in pass receptions for the last two years. The thing, I think the advantage Crawford has, though, is he's a little bit better runner than Edwards was. First down 10 from the 20. You're watching his running ability right now. Inside the 15, down near the 10-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 11. Kermit Kendrick with the tackle. This has been the most impressive offensive drive of the day for Vanderbilt. They've gotten down here very quickly. A couple of 15, 20-yard runs and completions. That's the end of the third quarter. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 6. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Dudley Field, Nashville, Tennessee. The fourth and final quarter. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 6. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. Vanderbilt on a drive. Second down, short yardage from the 12. They give it to Kenny Weatherspoon. He gets absolutely nowhere on that play. It'll bring up third down and about a yard. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. So it'll be third down and a long yard. They spot it right outside the 11 yard line near the left side half schmark. New quarterback in the game for Vanderbilt. Just went in last series, this beginning of this series. Tim Richardson, a 6'1, 185 pound freshman from Sparta, Tennessee. Third down one, Vanderbilt at the 11 of Alabama. Draw play, Everett Crawford. He doesn't get it either. And this is the same song, 25th verse today for Vanderbilt. They have been inside the 20-yard line more than 10 times <laughs> and unable to get anything but two field goals. And that's the whole idea of this new Alabama defensive philosophy. I think, as we mentioned earlier, they'd like to tighten down the screws a little bit on that bend part. <laughs> I don't think they'd like to bend as much as they've bent. But they certainly have been tough inside the 20-yard line. What they've been doing is they're doubling both outside wide receivers. They're going man-to-man -man in the interior and rushing with three people. Fourth down one, Vanderbilt. Everett Crawford gets the first down as they go for it on fourth, trailing 34-6. Opening moments of the fourth quarter, and it'll be first down goal from the seven-and-a-half-yard line. Crawford with 39 yards rushing the football. He has six catches for 71 yards, and he has been the offensive star for Vanderbilt today. I think in their scheme of things, he'll continue in that uh, in that same vein. First and goal. There's Carl Woods driving. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. see this again you see Everett Crawford coming in down helping out on the double team block and nobody really blocked Joe Goodwin he was blitzing up field couldn't change directions in time to get back to put his hat on the ball and then a, just a nice job of running by Carl Woods carried Ricky Thomas into the end zone it's his third touchdown on the year excuse me Carl Woods first touchdown on the year point after is good with 13 10 to go in this ball game from Nashville it's Alabama 34 Vanderbilt 13 this is Turner Network Television and prior to the Vanderbilt kickoff we're going to pause five seconds for station identification we're BRC 6 Birmingham from Nashville, Tennessee, Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 13. 13 10 to go in the ballgame. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. Beautiful afternoon for football here. Vanderbilt's been able to move the football, particularly through the air today, but until just now, been unable to get it into the Alabama end zone. And Ray Perkins, bend but don't break defense, the rubber band defense, if you will. It's been stretching but not breaking all afternoon until that Vanderbilt drive. They're going to try an onside kick. Doesn't go 10 yards. One of, the, one of the poorer efforts of an onside kick that traveled about a yard. <laughs> They'd, they'll have to bring it back, penalize it, and probably kick it regular this time. So Alan Herline <laughs> didn't get the job done he wanted to do. 73 yard drive, eight plays, 638 on the clock, and Carl Woods with the seven yard touchdown run. Yeah, Alabama has a choice after that, Bob. They'll probably take possession of the football where it went out of bounds. And they did, in fact. Shula still in there against Cincinnati. The only five drives he was in the football game, they scored touchdowns. Uh, and I think that he's five for six today in terms of possession. So that's pretty productive point scoring right there. Once again, an incredible field position situation for Alabama. Vanderbilt. There's Bobby Humphrey. Look at those moves. 
to the 34-yard line. Alabama with 349 yards of total offense prior to that play. Vanderbilt with 273. Vanderbilt's only been able to rush for 88, and Alabama's run for 211 yards today, plus that run. We have Bobo and Jokes in the backfield. Here is Gene Jokes, the freshman. Blazing speed. Couldn't turn the corner, but he may have gotten enough for the first down. I believe he did near the 30-yard line. There's a view of the skyline of Music City, USA, the brick buildings in the near background, of course, the campus of Vanderbilt University right near downtown Nashville. One of the loveliest cities in America. Always enjoy our trip here in Middle Tennessee. George McIntyre takes great in pride in the fact that he shook the hands of 22 graduating seniors last year as they walked across the stage to get their diplomas. Gene Jelks. Taking it outside for Alabama. Gains about three or four near the 25-yard line. Matter of fact, of those 22, that was all 22 of, Al of Vanderbilt's seniors graduated last year. Graduated, got their degrees. <laughs> what did George say? He says, most of these guys are making more than me now. But he says, of course, that's, I guess that's why I'm in business here. <laughs> Obviously, Vanderbilt operates under some restrictions that uh, really don't encumber a team like Alabama. I mean, if you, if you come to school here, you know, they, I think the average SAT score is 1,200. Guys that smart don't like playing football. <laughs> <laughs> After the first they can make a real living. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a real motivational job on the part of George McIntyre. Well, Jones here in the backfield by Steve Wade. Senior from Chattanooga who played a game that was just simply incredible last year in Vanderbilt's upset of Alabama at the Alabama homecoming but today he's been really quiet number 90 uh, takes that angle to the inside makes a big hit and he's a leader on that defense and he's trying to trying to uh, provide some enthusiastic leadership for a, a group of guys that are kind of banged up and nicked and uh, oversized tries to keep them running on all eight cylinders he's still bothered by a serious elbow bruise it's third down seven Alabama Shulip, under a little pressure, gets it away to Albert Bell, number one. Bell goes down to the 18-yard line of Vanderbilt. Sykes with a tackle. 11-13 to go in the ball game, And Mike Shula has thrown 13 passes now. If he throws one more, it'll be, be his biggest passing production attempt of the year. You know, he reminds me a lot of Bob Greasy in the sense that if, if they need to throw the ball, he can throw the ball, but his ego doesn't demand it. He doesn't demand center stage. He doesn't have to be the center of attention. He just calls the plays that are going to work in given situations, and that's the type of guy that you want leading your football team. Shield is 9 out of 13 for 147 yards. Hands off. Vanderbilt makes the stop right there at the 19. John Wyndham with the tackle on Mike Bobo, number 24, from Crossville, Alabama. And someone else we ought to talk about is Jimmy Fuller, who's the offensive line coach and assistant head coach at Alabama. Uh, played with Ray Perkins at Alabama and, and uh, was a, a head coach at Jackson State. Came over when Ray got the job to uh, be his assistant head coach and done a, done a great job with this line because they do as good a job as anyone recognizing different fronts and changing blocking schemes. Second down, 10 Alabama from the 19. Shula on the option. He's going to keep it for about three, four yards. Gets near the 15-yard line. It'll bring up third down and substantial yardage. Alabama will have to go to the nine-yard line. Vanderbilt for the first down. 34-13, Crimson Tide. 10th ranked in the country coming into this game. 9.59 remaining. You know, it's not easy being brought up as the son of a, a legend in terms of football. And uh, Mike Shula handles it very well, as did his brother David, who was a standout at Dartmouth, played with the Baltimore Colts for a while. Both of them getting all that there is out of their ability. They're red liners, as, as you'd say, and just, uh, just a really a true credit to their coach. On third down six, number 22, Armando Fitz comes back and nails Mike Shula here outside the 25. They say his forward progress was at the 24. It'll be a 41-yard field goal attempt coming up. Chris Gaines coming around the left side there. Here comes Armando Fitz. Untouched until he greets Mr. Shula and lays him on the turf. Nine-yard loss on the sack by the 6'4", 217-pound junior from Madison. 
Here's Van Tiffen with a 41-yard field goal attempt. He's hit field goals of 40 and 21 thus far today. Eight out of nine on the year. That one is no good. This is that one wide to the right side. And the score remains Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 13. There's the man who scored the Vanderbilt touchdown earlier, Carl Woods. He has 52 yards on the day, the junior from Gallatin, Tennessee. There have been some good running backs here at Vanderbilt. Carl Woods, the, uh, the best running back of the recent era. Tom Moore was a good one in the late 50s. Went to the Packers, Rams, and Falcons. Two-time all-conference reporter with his 1950s haircut. I had a haircut like that in high school. And I must say Tom looks a lot better than I did with my haircut. <laughs> Except at the time, it seemed okay. You know? right. Tim Foley with his Miami Vice haircut. By the way, Tim, you are very fashionable this year. <laughs> Mr. GQ. Uh, Need more shots of you on camera with that haircut. Here's that shovel pass to Everett Crawford. Open field. Oh, he falls down. I cannot get over the number of Vanderbilt players who fall down in this ball game. And George McIntyre said it happened two times on the road previously at Iowa State and Kansas. This is just a substitution for the draw, trying to slow down the rush. There he goes. Good block by Adair. Now he makes a cut, tries to take his body faster than it'll go. That was a pass play, by the way. Out of bounds at the 45 yard line. It looked like a penalty marker was thrown down there on Carl, uh, where Carl Woods was tackled. Let's see if it was a penalty marker. I'm not sure. Uh, yes, there is a flag thrown, but I let's just hold on for a moment. Personal foul, Alabama, maybe hitting out of bounds. Just to show you, some things never change, Bob. You know, Mike Shula's Don Shula's son. Well, Ray Berry's son plays for Vanderbilt. He's a receiver for Van Vanderbilt in the media guide. Here's what it has to say about Ray Berry's son: Good hands, but working to improve his speed. Personal foul, automatic first down. You know, I might mention here with that uh, automatic first down to the 39-yard line, the personal foul. Vanderbilt's driving. Should they score again, they'll pull with eight minutes to two touchdowns of Alabama. It could be 34 to 20. Let's see what happens. Vanderbilt on the drive. Inside Alabama territory. First down. Tim Richardson. It's Everett Crawford. Gets about six at the 34-yard line. We're leaving you here in Nashville now for a moment to go to West Lafayette, Indiana. To check in on the Notre Dame-Purdue game from... State Stadium, West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue leading at 21-3. Third down, 10. Everett firing incomplete intended for Steve Griffin. And now we'll see what Leon Bertinetti likes to do here. We set it up. <laughs> he told us yesterday that he does not have a whole lot of confidence in his place kicking game from outside 35 yards or so. But Jonathan Briggs is in there, and he'll try this one from the 32. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. At this point, I think he really wants to give him a, a shot at it because because they're ahead 21 to 3. If he can put them ahead 24 to 3, that's going to be very difficult for Notre Dame to come back in one quarter. So here's the attempt by Jonathan Briggs to make this a 21-point lead. The kick is on its way. Nope. Wide to the left. So the attempt is no good. And Notre Dame will get the ball back with just 52 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And that's why Leon Burtnett does not have great confidence in his kicking game, and especially the place kicking uh, game of uh, Jonathan Briggs. continues the drive here in Nashville. First down pass to freshman Tony Piercy to the 15-yard line of Alabama. Tim Richardson looking sharp. That was a 20-yarder. On the previous play, Richardson had almost had a pass picked off. He tried to force it into the coverage. This time, finds the, the soft belly of that zone and rifles it in there to Tom Piercy. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you here from Nashville. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 13, 723 to go, fourth quarter. Vanderbilt driving again. They scored a touchdown on their last drive. Richardson, pocket, now in trouble, and down he goes at the 18-yard line. Coming around to get him was number 34, Ricky Thomas, the junior from Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. It'll bring up uh, second down now at about 13. Safety blitz that time, Bob. Got to get a little extra pressure on there. 
Ellen Herline might have an opportunity for a field goal. I doubt they'll try that, though, trailing 34-13. Vandy will probably just keep going for it to attempt to get the ball into the end zone. As I mentioned, should they score here, the game certainly wouldn't be totally out of reach. But scoring inside the 20 against Alabama is something else again. And I rest my case on that statement. Greg Gilbert with the evidence for the defense. Number 56, blitzing on Richardson. Well, they've lined up in this fake blitz a lot, come back out of there with uh, three men rushing. Now, this time, Greg Gilbert comes around the horn and throws Timmy Richardson. Doesn't treat him too nicely. Throws him to the dirt. To the 27-yard line, it's third down, 24. Six minutes remaining in this ball game. Three receivers on the right side, only tight end Jim Pop on the left side. Single setback, Carl Woods. Richardson, under pressure again. But this is what he does best, and that's sprint out. The ball is caught at the 10-yard line. Number six, Boo Mitchell, the freshman from Valdosta, Georgia, with a great catch at the 10. 17-yard completion. Let's watch the coverage here. You're going to see the linebackers trying to run man-to-man -man underneath with their people. Boo Mitchell on the right of your screen takes that linebacker down, bends him to the inside, and then pops it back to the outside as Richardson breaks out of the pocket. He delivers the ball right on time. And it's short of the first down, I might point out, because of the sacks. It will be fourth down and about four from just inside the 10-yard line. Vanderbilt calls a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Five minutes, 45 seconds remaining here in Nashville on the campus of Vanderbilt. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 13. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. This is fourth down and four. Vanderbilt from the nine-yard line of Alabama. Here they come. Richardson with a lot of time. Gets to the five. Let's see where they spot it. He reached it forward. They put it on the five. It could be enough. It could be enough on the heady move by the freshman. They'll have to bring the sticks in from the far side of the field, but I believe the spot will give them a first down. Watch it again. See Greg Gilbert blitzing up in there, trying to get into the picture. Jarvis trying to unload his man. Freddie Robinson comes up and makes the tackle, but as you mentioned, a very intelligent play, reaching that ball forward. They have the first down. At the five of Alabama, very heady play by Tim Richardson. I've liked the looks of him. He and Gromos provide a real contrast at quarterback for Vanderbilt. The tall pocket passer and the heady scramble. First and goal from the five. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 13. Commodores have been here several times today and only gotten it into the end zone one time. Crawford in motion, Carl Woods. possessions have solved the defense of Alabama for touchdowns and now trail 34-19 with 5.06 to go in the game. Adair gets good movement on that on, on the block going to his left then eliminates Joe Godwin and a good job of running by Carl Woods again Everett Crawford coming in motion to double team to help open that hole up. Point after attempt by her line. Tom Gray backup quarterback holding point after is good. Alabama leads by two touchdowns, 34-20. With 5.06 remaining in this ball game, there's a little bit of time left. Stay with us. And let's look at the touchdown run again. Jim Pop, 81. Number 62 is uh, Mark Herman. Daryl Holt, 51. And then Shane Adair gets the block that really pops it open. Crawford seals to the strong side. And then Adair gets a good block, head-up block on Joe Godwin, and Woods takes it into the end zone. They solved the problem down there, Bob. They just they just solved the predicament. What to do inside the 10 against Alabama today? Run it. Vanderbilt had several opportunities inside the Alabama 20-yard line and came away with nothing in the first half. Or this certainly would be a different ball game score-wise. Here's the onside kick. Attempt. It did not travel 10 yards. I believe Vanderbilt has the ball. It did not go 10 yards, folks. I didn't see it. Did Alabama touch the ball? 
It's Alabama's ball at the 46 yard line. That would be the only way that Vanderbilt could have come up with it is if Alabama had touched it before it traveled 10 and then recovered it, but they did not. It is Alabama ball at the 47. Some Vanderbilt fans expressing their opinion. McIntyre out on the field asking for a ruling. Now let me get this straight now. You're saying that I think there was a disagreement among the officials. I believe, I think I saw one of them call uh, call it one way and one call it the other way, which will always bring a roar from the crowd and a discussion from the coach. As you can see, the official officiating crew from the Southeastern Conference discussing it right now with referee Al Ford, the man in the white hat. And that is the decision of the committee. And you hear the reaction of the audience. But to be expected here in Nashville on the campus of Vanderbilt. 5.03 to go in the ballgame. Alabama 34, Vanderbilt 20. Alabama has scored on every possession of the football game except for the first and last times they had the ball. Other than that, Alabama has come away with either field goal or touchdowns. From the 47, draw play. Bobby Humphrey running with a lot of strength to the 40-yard line of Vanderbilt. 180 pound freshman from Birmingham Alabama Humphrey had over 100 yards running the ball last week this week he has 91 going into that carry that's six so he has 97 today you know Kerry good the soft is only a sophomore the fellow that that Alabama thought was going to be so good last year when he got hurt early and against Boston College is back from the injury still has a sore knee being held out try to get that knee knee fully well as he watches these freshmen, Kerry Goode's going to be wishing he's in there getting some playing time. Could be hard to break back in there. Here's Craig Turner. Attempted first down run to the 37-yard line of Vanderbilt. I think they want to make real sure before they get uh, Kerry Goode any more work. They want to make sure he's healthy for Penn State. And uh, Bobby Humphrey is good, but as good started the season last year I mean he was exceptional three touchdowns against Boston College and just he can do everything but what they've developed here is a sense of unity and a sense of team I think that's the most important thing there's not going to be any one single hero of this Alabama off offense as it grows it's going to be a group third and one from the 37 yard line of Vanderbilt power formation double tight ends tailback he may not have made it we'll watch for the spot Chris Gaines with the big hit. Very close. And it would be a significant call here. They say he did not make it. They won't have to measure. It'll be fourth down. Alabama may decide to go for it. Chris Gaines has 12 tackles on the day. Vanderbilt's leading defender. Perkins is going to go for it. Leading 34-13 at the 37-yard line of Vanderbilt. 3.07 to go in the game. Defensive coaches getting the defense ready to get in the game for Alabama. Huh. Out of the shotgun. <laughs> oh, huh Ray. is exactly oh, what Al Ray. Ford said. Ray, were Ray, they Ray. set? And since they were set, <laughs> was the contact counted? Was there encroachment or offside, illegal procedure or illegal motion or none of the above? So an officiating quiz. Here's Al's uh -oh. answer. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's a, going for a free one there. That's all that was. Well, he had four choices. Right. Uh, the other choice would have been to just stand up there and bark off signal, to try to draw the opposition offside. Now they're actually going to go for it. If you can get it for free, why not take it? There they try it again. Fourth and inches. Bobby Humphrey. Bye -bye. He got to the 19 yard line which happens so often on third or fourth down in very short yardage everybody bunches in tight to stop that attempt for the first down and if you can pop it past the first defensive player it's usually a big game good job of blocking by Rose and Thornton Chandler he finds the seam Greg Turner again gets a nice block Greg Turner and uh, Sykes did an excellent job there of saving a touchdown because Humphrey was off to the races 2.05 to go in this ball game. The biggest thing Alabama is doing on this drive, of course, is using the clock. They lead 34-20. Humphrey. 
stopped at the line of scrimmage. Chris Gaines again in on the tackle, and we'd have to talk about Chris Gaines, and George McIntyre feels that he's only a sophomore, that Gaines has the opportunity to become one of the great collegiate linebackers. His brother, Greg, is a player for the Seattle Seahawks. Chris's dad played college football and very well. And Chris's younger brother, Brad, is a high school player. And George thinks, Tim, he may be better than the whole bunch. Yep. And last week, Gaines had 10 tackles, and he uh, caused a fumble, picked a fumble off in the air, intercepted a pass. It's about as good as you can play. Second down, 10 from the 19. Bobby Humphrey. Cutting against the grain, driving to the 13-yard line. Clock goes down to 107, 105, 104 and counting. Nebraska clobbering Oregon in the second quarter. Georgia, South Carolina in a close one in Athens, 28-21. South Carolina coming back a little bit there. Virginia Tech beats Syracuse, 24-14. Appalachian State over Wake Forest, 14-12. That's fourth quarter score. Western Michigan leading Michigan State. Boy, that's a Midwestern score if you ever heard one. Our defensive slugfest, East Lansing. 3-0 in the fourth quarter. Purdue leading Notre Dame late also, 21-3 last we heard. Here's Bobby Humphrey. Into the air and picked up by number 50, Rob Roberts, right out of the air, who dives down <laughs> to the two yard line. And when you're hot, you're hot. 21 seconds to go in this ballgame. Boy, would Rob Roberts, who's the backup senior uh, center, a senior from Birmingham, would he have liked to have been in that end zone? Watch this here. Humphrey fighting for yardage. Bang, the ball's popped out by Marvin Thomas and Rob Roberts, come on down to Mama. Clock this is my chance. <laughs> this is my somebody bring the goal line over here. Continues to run. Eight, seven, six, three, two, one. Touchdown, Alabama on the final play of the game. Craig Turner. The clock down to double zeros. Adding insult to injury, and the crowd here at Vanderbilt not real happy to see Alabama go for the touchdown with only two seconds left. Right over the top. Even though the time has expired, they will come in for the point after conversion. That is a no clock situation. It is Alabama 40, Vanderbilt 20. So Ray Perkins gets the touchdown here as the clock goes down to double zeros and puts some points on the board, which gets the attention of uh, coaches and writers when they rank teams in polls around the country. That's one of the reasons teams do that. And the officials now are not going for the point after touchdown here. As the clock has expired, after a discussion, they decided they would not do that. And it is Alabama 40, Vanderbilt 20. That's the final score. This is Turner Network Television.